Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Jason Grady. I'd like to call this meeting to order. This is the Inland Wetlands Commission Monroe. It is March the 27th and is currently 7.01. The first order of business is always the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> <coughs> and now to introduce the members of the commission currently in attendance. Starting all the way on my right is Commissioner Clark Gingris. Gingris, sorry, I always say it wrong. Next is uh, Ross Masterocco. Uh, the record will reflect that all the way on the right, um, Commissioner Keith Romano has arrived. Directly to my right is uh, Jim Stewart, who is our treasurer and a professional engineer and a licensed land surveyor. To my left is Lois Spence, our secretary. To her left is Donald Szczynski, who is the Inland and Wetlands Commission and Land Use Coordinator. Office manager. Oh, I'm sorry. What, so is it just Donald Szczynski, office, office manager? Office manager. That is the new thing. Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yep, what she said. Um, to her left is uh, Scott Schatzelein, who is a uh, licensed professional engineer. engineer town engineer and our inland and wetlands agent and um, also with us is Sarah Stroud who is our clerk. Clerk. We still have clerk and training yeah. down here. The recording secretary. Right. And best friend. <laughs> inland wetlands uh, mission statement is the objective and purpose of the inland wetlands commission is to provide for the overall protection and preservation of inland and wetlands and water courses within the town of Monroe. <clears throat> In the normal course of our meetings, we will hear public hearings and other applications. The protocol for public hearing is to have an applicant make a representation or presentation to the commission during which and after which the commission will be asking the applicant questions. The commission will then review town, staff, and other independent comments. The meeting will be opened up to the public for comment. I will ask that all comments be made to the chair or commission. <clears throat> After any and all comments pro, in opposition, or of a general nature are made, me, the applicant will be given the opportunity to respond. It is not necessary that the applicant respond, but generally in their best interest to do so. There will be no further opportunity for new questions unless new material is entered in as evidence or testimony during the response. Please keep any and all comments pro and con specific to inland wetlands related matters. Other applications that do not involve a public hearing will follow a similar format with the exception that there will be no public comments allowed. The meeting follows our published agenda unless otherwise amended. I think everybody has seen our agenda on the top here if they like. Are there any changes to our agenda tonight? There are not. Excellent. Uh, general public participation now is a portion of our meeting dedicated to uh, general public comment. Um, not specific to anything on our agenda tonight. See none. Move on to our subdivision recommendation uh, report and recommendation to P and Z Commission, IWC 2019-045 Bridge Road. And it's creation of two residential lots with dwellings and associated site improvements. Of Bridge LLC, Kimball. Continued from our last meeting. Should be well, noted that this is also okay. a public hearing, IWC 2019-05. The yeah, that's what I'm looking for. You guys don't have a mouse down that way, do you? No. Was it out earlier? Um, hmm. it not uh, mouse -less. Not we are mouseless. We are mouseless. Well, like a mouse. No, no that's a speaker. Yeah. Microphone. Yeah, it's like oh, microphone. Sorry. It's like a mouse shape. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 Okay.
just hate to see someone leave. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. No, I agree. Yeah, yeah, I agree. No reason. Agreed. doesn't make any sense. I shouldn't hold it to that. But go ahead. It's not Carboni, Scott York, Associates, we're engineers for uh, the applicant for this project. I am a professional engineer licensed in the state. At um, our last hearing, we uh, had presented a letter of the comments. Since then, uh, Scott and I have talked and we've worked through many of these things. And I'm just going to touch on the highlights of this. Again, this is a two-lot subdivision. This is Route 34. This is Bridge Road, the Halfway River, and Lake Zor over in this area. This is for a subdivision referral to the Planning and Zoning Commission. We're showing two lots on this piece of property. There have been the only changes since the last uh, hearing has been to, um, to redefine where we're putting the limit of disturbance, the silfest marker, such as that. This is the area that was marked out in the field, and it represents an old driveway or clearing that went up through this area. And what we've done is we've said we would put the uh, limit of disturbance at the back of this. There will be a split rail fence in that area to uh, make demarcation between the lawn area and the woods and the steep slope. Also, in front of this, as was discussed at last meeting, we are putting a shallow swale with silt fence behind it. This is a was the recommendation of the. Uh, Commission last time to prevent any erosion from this uh, disturbance in this area to go down past the river. This will be, as I say, a shallow swell with breaks about every 50 feet. The idea being is we don't want to dis concentrate where the discharge is and have one outlet. This, if it overflows, it will do that in several locations. Uh, obviously, when this is uh, this will construction phase. After that, it will be allowed to um, go back to nature and most likely fill itself in or certainly have vegetation on it. Uh, from the comments that Scott gave us the day before yesterday, there was a problem with the labeling of the uh, survey maps, this will be changed. The, uh, at the last hearing and on his letter, there was a question as to what is the status of this area right in here. This is the uh, end of the state piping from here down to the bottom is a riprap channel. Um, how do I get back to this one? Mm -hmm. <coughs> mm 
what, did you want the uh, the combined? Uh, no. If you go down to the bottom. This. Yeah, but you want the photograph? Yes. Next, right next to it is it? On the bottom, yeah. And yeah. then on the bottom of that screen, see the two arrows to your right? Nope. Next, keep going. There you go. Click that. There you go. No. Mm -hmm. I wanted another picture. Here. How do I get back to it? This is a picture of that stream running back up. This is 34. This is taken from just about the uh, retaining wall along the side of the river. This, according to whether it's a intermittent stream or not, there is obviously a channel here, uh, man-made, but it is a channel. And at the time of these photographs, which was yesterday, there was a small amount of flow underneath the riprap, which therefore makes it a um, intermediate water course. So this becomes an intermediate water course. There would be a 50 foot, uh, 100 foot regulated area off of that, which would be about in this area, but it's already in the regulated area of Halfway River and the uh, the, the lake, so even though it is a uh, intermittent stream, it has no effect on the property. We have no new regulated area, and we don't have any development of this lot within 100 feet of the, of, of the intermittent water course. So it answers the question, but really there has no consequences. The uh, a wetlands delineation report was prepared and submitted on her, uh, a week ago, Wednesday. And Mr. Kenny found that along this portion of the river, there is a shallow, uh, not a deep, but a narrow band of wetlands in that area. Again, 50 feet, 100 feet from the wetlands is still within the regulated area. So it is there but again, has no consequence. There is also some wetlands down in this area. There's a flat plain in here, and the uh, survey map that we submitted last week uh, shows some wetlands in here. Again, we do not have any development near that, those wetlands. Scott, uh, in this hearing, asked for the location of some driveways that were in there. And we're having, this is not surveyed. This is, if you had a bigger picture of this, you could see that there are remnants of the water. This flat area, if you follow those contours along there, that is the road that has been there historically. Um, not quite sure how long, but apparently this driveway came up and went into here. This is the location of the one of the cabins that were part of the uh, recreational areas that were done in the 30s and 40s. There is <coughs> another possible driveway, again, defined by these contours that came up into this area. This, although it's not evident by the contours, this driveway came around and back to the road over in here. This one came into here. This whole general area was a previously developed area also used by DOT for their staging for the construction along 34. The point is, though, that where this driveway is on our property, it will be removed and restored by the uh, construction of the septic system, the lawn areas in that. It is not in, for example, an area over in here. Just, I just want to verify that this area will be restored, and it will be. Um, 
Those were the questions. Um, the last one was your considerations, and that is that this is a subdivision. Separate applications will have to be made for each lot to this commission for a site development, which will be a later hearing tonight. Uh, this note is currently on the S-1 sheet, and it will be added to the subdivision map for this, and we can do that as a condition of approval. Commission, have any questions? I think I asked the question last time, and I don't, <laughs> sorry, but I don't remember the answer. Will this lot have access to the river or the lake on its own property? Will, it, will there be any access? I'm sorry, will lot three have? Um, no, this is, this is lot two. I'm or, looking at a subdivision map oh, okay. the other of one. lot two and three. Um, yes, will lot three have access to the water? Pedestrian access, yes. There will not be vehicular access. So there's no access for them down to the other dock area? To this dock That's, area right. down here? No. Sorry, excuse me. Uh, it's John Kimball, um, 1428 Monroe Turnpike. I actually reserve um, uh, uh, access easement rights um, over Nine Bridge Road so that they can use the pre existing driveway to get down to the dock. These, so in essence, you're adding an easement? I, 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 we reserved it in the deed when we sold the property because we used to own Nine Bridge Road also. Okay. So uh, they would go out onto Bridge Road and back in the, and down the drive, the existing driveway to the existing dock that's already there. Okay, does there need to be language in, on the site plan anywhere that's, that get, grants that? Well, it's, it's granted in the, It'll be granted in the deed, um, and it's on the. It's a subservient easement to the Nine Bridge Road property. It's not an easement on the three or two Bridge Road property. You know what I mean? So it, it's it it's already outside of the scope of the. Okay, so they this. can't access it through lot two. No, no, they no. have to go they out and around. No, driveway down, 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 down to so, so the driveway. easement basically basically follows down the driveway of this, Nine Bridge Road, which is the adjacent neighbor, which is not part of this application, but. Is that the one where the, the gravel drive <coughs> goes through? Yes. Okay, that's but, nine, because that's yeah, not no, listed on here. That's so. not worth, no. No? These are historic driveways. No, yeah, I'm not, but, but, but I'm only interested in the access to the dock. Next door, yes. There is would access to the existing gravel driveway that's already, that already goes down to the lake. So they'd have to come out onto Bridge Road and then go down right. this driveway. Exactly. Right. Okay. Yep. Abilities to be made for that. that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, will there be any language on the deed or whatever having to do with the inability to construct a road or anything other than pedestrian access for Lot Three well, to get down to the lake or not, the river? We were not planning on putting any restriction, but. They would, they can't. You know, we're clearly, you know, showing delineation line and and a um, and putting a fence up. That and if you've been to, I don't know if you've been to the site, but if you've been to the site, there's no, you can't put a boat or anything. Like there's, it's. I know it's pretty vertical. Really shallow that. water um, and very vertical getting down there. Okay. So, you, lot three could. There was an old um, suspend, pedestrian suspension bridge actually pinned into the rock right where that 112 contour is right there. There's actually two steel pins in the rock mm -hmm. left over right near that. It was like almost like a, like a natural swimming hole. Um, and there's steel pins in the rock in Newtown from where somebody had an old pedestrian bridge there. So, um, but other than that, I mean, the water is, is, is ankle deep most of the time. It's, it, it fills up in the spring, and then it's really, you know, it trickles around the rocks in that area. So it's, you wouldn't bring a boat or do anything else. People do go down there to go fishing. Um, but, you know, for, for any kind of real activity, you know, you would go down to the pre-existing dock that we've already got uh, at, at, um, at the water. 
that wouldn't stop them from trying to put a road. <laughs> well, to really, it wouldn't. I know it wouldn't be easy, and it wouldn't a lot be too, uh, pretty. A lot too, it would be literally impossible. If you, I don't know, again, if you've been to that site and actually stood, because I, I, I did. Yeah, if you stood where I, I don't know if you've been there recently, where I, where I since you paid went it, along yeah. the, the edge of the topography and followed the path. If you step over that line, you fall right down that, I mean, you literally fall off a cliff into the water. Um, okay, so that's not too good. nobody's building a road there. Um, they, they would have to. They would have to start at Henny Penny, and start grading in order to get a road <laughs> that they could drive down to get okay, to the water. Okay, I get your point. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Where were we with the flood claim issue? The floodway. Sorry. It really hasn't. Change that hasn't been resolved either. The maps, the FEMA maps, are incorrect and they show the floodplain coming up 30 feet above the lake level, which is obviously an error. The flood uh, plain or the flood way has been delineated on the survey map, and it basically, as you would expect, follows the edge of Lake Zor and or uh, Boys Half uh, the Halfway River. Um, Bill, just, just for clarification for the record, you said it backwards. The flood plain is along the, the river and the lake. The flood way is shown incorrectly 30, 30 feet higher up the, the hill. It has not been reserved, has not been resolved. There will have to be a LOMA uh, map of, a letter of map amendment made uh, to correct the mapping on there. And we are in the process of putting together that LOMA, which will correct it. But one way or another, um, we have no development anywhere near the floodplain and or floodway. Just, can, can I clarify three things? All right. Um, first of all, um, the, the, um, the FEMA is putting together not a LOMA, but a LOMAR, which is a letter of map provision, which would address this issue. Um, I spoke with them, and they indicated that um, at first glance, it does look like the floodway is incorrectly shown on the FEMA map. The problem is that the floodway as shown on the FEMA map is the adopted regulatory line for the town. So the local, um, the town regulates floodplains through the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, the regulations. And, um, the floodway is re regulated as shown on the FEMA map, which is, uh, we feel is incorrect and FEMA agrees. Um, the floodplain is, although the floodplain on the FEMA map also is shown pictorially incorrectly, it's not an issue because the actual floodplain that the town regulates is determined through site-specific contours and the flood study through the profile elevations, and that's why that's located along the edge of the water. So um, what you're going to find is that the, uh, there's two applications before the commission. The application that, that has yet to come tonight um, is the, uh, the construction on the house on the lot, that's lot two, right? Yes. Yeah. So that one, None of the proposed activity is within the floodplain. Uh, but the subdivision shows activity that at the moment is located in the floodway. But we all are recognizing FEMA, the applicant, uh, the town, we're all recognizing that it's, it's not correct because it's like 30 feet higher uh, in elevation. So. It's just a technicality of the, the uh, FEMA going through and correcting their, um, their 
uh, plan. And they, they correct it by issuing a LOMAR, letter of map revision, and they told me that could take up to three to four months. So I had asked them to send us some kind of letter or something saying that they're in the process of doing that. Uh, I, I, although the regulatory line goes, scroll down a little bit on that. Um, uh, although the regulatory, no, the other way. Although the regulatory line goes through the septic system for lot three, um, it's not really a, a wetlands issue. I merely put it on the wetlands comments so that the applicant would have that, the benefit of having that information early, as early as possible so that they could work on addressing the issue. So my suggestion is just that that comment uh, go to the Planning and Zoning Commission. It's going to be on the Planning and Zoning Commission's uh, comments from me anyway. And then they'll deal with it whatever way they, they can. Uh, hopefully the letter will be in from FEMA saying that they're working on it and it'll get addressed that way. But it's not real. I mean, you don't regulate floodplains. It's just on there because it, it is very um, connected to wetland issues uh, being a floodplain. Floodway in this case. So it would be our Thanks recommendation the that as part of the referral, this subject be brought up and making them aware of it. Thank you. And I, I remember you talked about this on the, at our last meeting, but just for to refresh my memory about the what was it a, a shed or a houseboat and some docks down in the wetland, right? What was our what was our resolution there? Well, the idea, I believe, the question or the comment was to locate them on the survey map. And that was done, and a revised surveying map was uh, sent back to you a week ago on that Wednesday. So most of it, I mean, the docks in this area uh, have been there for, I don't know, 40, 50 years. Now they've been rebuilt and changed and that. But I was just going to say, it's John Kimball again for the record. Um, I believe, I think what, what Scott was hoping to do and what we're looking to do is, um, I don't think it affects the subdivision per se, so that we could get through this piece of the hearing with the referral comments and then address it in the, the application for lot two. And we were intending on bringing in a, um, what do you call it? A um, permitted use as a right. Permitted use as a right application as a condition of, of Approval on that. The development of lot two? Yeah, for the development of lot two. And just, just a clarification there. Um, it, it's not meant to be a condition of approval. It never was meant to be a condition of approval. Right. Mm -hmm. And we have always, in, in our department, have never held up an application uh, for violations. However, we always will flag that for the commission, uh, whether it comes to the commission or we do it administratively. What we do is we process the application, but we tell the applicant that, hey, there might be an issue there. And we handle that as a separate issue. Uh, we have always done that. Uh, well, for the record, that was at our direction, because why, why would we go through all this then just to turn around and process something that might, yeah. might be a violation? Yeah, and so um, sometimes, a lot of times what happens is the time. applicant will take advantage of that. And instead of spending more money and time, they'll, they'll fold it in. So it could go either way. And our agendas appreciate that. So we can address it. We'll address it at the next one. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Good. I have no questions. Nothing further? Anything further from the commission? It's a public hearing. Yep. No, it's, this is not a public no. hearing. Oh, this, this, is, the just, this oh, is the referral. referral. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> um, closing comments are that uh, I believe we've addressed everything the staff and the commission has asked of us, and again, this development or this subdivision is um, well away from the river, the wetlands, and everything else. 
both horizontally and vertically. And the vertical is one of the biggest things we have here to limit any access to the river not on uh, existing roads. And we don't believe that this will have a adverse impact on the wetlands and ask that you provide a uh, referral to the commission stating that and noting also the problems with the FEMA mapping in this area. Thank you. Thank you. Is there new exhibits we need to read in on that, on this? Or just wait, is that just the hearing? No, So, um, exhibit, we read through one through four at the first meeting. Exhibit uh, five was a seven sheet plan set titled The Subdivision of Land Bridge Road, Route 34 by Spath to Jarkland. The document was dated December 12th. Uh, yeah, December 17th, 2018. The revision date was March 20th, 2018. 19. I have that wrong. Thank you for the clarification. I apologize. Um, number six was a letter to John Kimball. The reason was the wetland water course delineation by William Kenny, and the document was dated March 16th, 2019. Exhibit 7 was a response to the town engineer comments by Bill Carboni. That document was dated March 20th, 2019. And Exhibit 8 is updated town engineer comments. The document was dated March 12th and the revision date March 25th. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. That's it for the uh, subdivision report and recommendation of the PNZ Commission. Yes. Moving on to regulated activities. There's no regular meetings tonight. Um, for public hearings, <clears throat> I, uh, IWC 2019-02, I know that we are on Bridge Road, but for efficiency's sake, we'll just say Glen Hollow Drive, Ventura, second floor addition, new garage, driveway modification, detention. It's my understanding that we are going yes, to Yes, we got a continue. request that they, it be continued to um, the next, in the April meeting. Okay. The first meeting in April. We're good time-wise? Oh, we are. I discussed that with them at length today. And what's the date of that meeting? Do you know if it's up? Um, I do. Hold on. I don't know what time it is. I think it's a 10. April 10th, yes. April 10th. Okay. Any discussion? Do we need a motion on that? Or just, no. I'm just going to continue. Okay, continue until our April 10th meeting. IWC 2019-05, Five Bridge Road, single family home with associated site improvements, Bridge LLC, Kimbo, continued from our last um, meeting. Good evening, again. Can I help you? Yes, you can. Okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I don't know what happened to yeah, the other, uh, well, there's been other meetings, someone might have walked away. You did there's a little receiver there. That'll tell you if someone took no, the whole yeah, it is, but it is there? Do you have the more recent plan in your stick drive? I have both. I, I sent all the time. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, let's try this again. Okay. 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 Maybe it's time to change that stick drive. Yeah. Okay. It's old. You should probably do that. Well, it's very loose on this port. Oh, it is? So, yeah.
Maloney's Path, New York and Associates, engineers for the applicant. I'm a professional engineer. Uh, again, most of what we said on the last one applies to this one also. Uh, the silk fence and the uh, swale and, and wetlands markers, as I described before, had been moved to the far side of the well, somewhat existing driveway that comes in through here, but it's the limit of clearing that's there before the trees. The driveways that Scott had requested are shown here as previously. You can see that the lawn area, this fill area, and the lawn and the septic and the house in this area will restore those two historic driveways uh, to a lawn area. Uh, again, Scott and I have this. He has provided us <coughs> with a report. Two things that were left off of the uh, letter, and I, I blew it, I just did not show it last time, was the letter to Newtown notifying <coughs> them of this hearing and the health department letter. The notice to uh, Newtown was sent out on December 19th. The health department letter was uh, dated 3819, uh, and he had no problems with the subdivision. We have proposed a, also a washout area. This is a concrete washout area. And that is not on the plan. I have prepared an eight and a half mile of this. The washout area is a about 15 by 15 square that is surrounded by hay bales, and the bottom of it has an impervious layer. We have had problems in the past of the concrete trucks washing their trucks out wherever they felt like it. Many times that's in the septic system or over the septic system. So what we're saying is we're going to have a specific washout area dedicated to this fact. And because concrete has been poured and completed, this can be removed and uh, hay bales taken up. The impervious liner will then uh, be removed and any concrete washout will be removed with it. It's just part of the erosion control measures. Um, again, he, Scott wants, and we will do that, put a detail of the wetlands markers, which is the town standard, and a detail of this washout area on the D1 sheet. Um, but that's basically what it is, and those are the comments for the single family. Um, again, most of what we said before still applies. We have the uh, surrounding area with the silt fence with a shallow swale uh, in front of the fence to prevent. And there's also a silt fence at the toe of slope, which is what uh, Seamus wanted. So that's there, but it's a secondary. Um, measure we we'll put another one <coughs> along the limits of our disturbance. Is there any questions for the commission? So a detail for this shallow swale? How deep is shallow? How deep is shallow? Yeah. About a foot. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to be any deeper than that because we have to put a berm every 50 feet or so so that it goes out at multiple points. So I don't want a two foot swell just accumulate too much water before it discharges. So it will be, a, yeah, shallow, a foot, give or take, two feet wide, one foot deep. Okay. And then the- And the berm is how high? To the top. Oh, At the top okay. of the swell. So is the berm actually <coughs> higher in elevation than the, than the area before the swale? Notice that the yeah, visual I, aids. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I follow that. Um, 
Or is the berm at the same elevation as the, the ground before the swale and then the it's swale not, is It's between? not a berm. You can't or, remember, it's not a berm. It's a swale. We're not building up anything in there. I thought okay. you were going to have a berm, too. I don't know why I thought that, but I did. No, we were talking about putting a swale down here, which is just following the contours of the land. And we're going to make it put in something a foot deep just to catch anything before the commission wanted this to, mm -hmm. because we have the woods and, and the lake. So, I guess but no, there is not a detail on there yet, but it's just one foot deep with a burn every 50 feet. Um, and what, is this going to be planted in grass? Um, also, during construction it most likely won't be, but when we leave the site it will be planted in the grass. It will be a continuation of the lawn area. On the house itself, you have um, both of the recharge galleries have roof drains growing to, going to them. Is there going to be footing drains on this house? Um, I believe this right here is a footing drain and high level overflow from the uh, galleries. To the stone bleeder? Right. So yeah, that's the footing to, drain also. The footing drain is off the corner well by where it says porch, this area right here. And the galleries will also go to that stone bleeder. Okay, now I have questions on the, the dock area. Um, where's the houseboat live all the time? Where does it live? Yeah. Is it well, there? it's it's brought up onto the land, which would be a regulated area. Again, this is what. Right, and that that happens when. Is that I mean, this does this houseboat live in the water as a general rule, and then on land during yeah. the, the winter time, or is it? Yeah, in the summer too. Yeah. John Kimball, um, you know, during a boating season, it, it'll be out on the lake, and uh, and or tied to the dock, out in the lake, and then uh, after boating season, it, you know, bring it up on shore where where it's at right now. Um, okay, because that's something we never talked about. <laughs> we yeah, said it was yeah. a houseboat, but nobody yeah, really yeah. said that it was ever launched. Yeah, no, the the. Um, the uh, Basically, if you kind of go all along that area, there's docks and boats. P people basically pull them up out of the water for the winter. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they get ripped out of the, you know, anything sure. that's left in the water gets ripped out because of the ice. So mm -hmm. everybody pulls everything up on the land, and then in the spring, you push it back into the water and float it, and then it stays in the water for the boating season. Then we pull it back out before they lower the lake, which then... Okay. Make it impossible. <laughs> All right. Yes, thank you. Um, Does that have any ill effects on the land in that regulated area when you're dragging the boat up and then pushing it back in? No, the, the area, um, as Bill Kenny points out in his report, is is like a sand, it's like beach basically in that area. It's rocky, sandy, gravelly area. There's no vegetation growing there, so it it. it it, it would be basically like doing sand castles or moving sand, yeah, you know, sand around. Know. And that's the same with the docks too that are stored there now. Those um, go, those will go back into the yeah, water. Yeah, the, the, the docks go back and get, go back into the water, but it's a it's a, a basically cobble sand and gravel area right at, right along. And that cha you know that changes. You get a, a lot of stuff coming down the river, and that area will build up. You get um, seasonal low flow and you know, sometimes it, it gets washed out and you end up with a sandbar, you know, like, so, so that's, it, it kind of, we get a lot of, a lot of changes in that. Scott, I, I was under the impression that the, that the power authority or the, the, the dam, dam authority had some um, regulatory authority over, over the, they do, over us, though. 
Well, um, I, I didn't get a chance to, I didn't hook up with him again. He was telling me something about um, that they, there's uh, apparently some, some case law about the, that they supersede, they actually supersede the Planning and Zoning Commission. Because I, he didn't, he didn't I, spoke to, I spoke to a zoning guy in uh, Southbury regarding a, a property over there abutting the lake and regarding what, what could be done and how difficult it was, uh, wetlands was regarding, you know, upgrading along, along the uh, um, lake. And their opinion was, oh, you know, you don't even come to us. You go directly to them and they're pretty lenient. Well, he, so I, there's um, there's a new uh, the reason I know about this is that there is proposed legislation about mm -hmm. this whole thing, and um, my understanding is that they're <laughs> they they actually own a lot of land that people didn't think that they own along the edge of the, mm. the water. So people who thought they had like lakefront property don't actually have it. I don't think that's in Monroe though. Um, but anyway, the way he explained it to me is it's more, it's becoming more restrictive. Uh, and he told me that they supersede the zoning, uh, but he didn't tell me they supersede wetlands. I don't know the answer to that. But just as clarification, the, and, and that's why in this situation, there's not enough information. And I, I, I don't think this can be really handled at this point in time. Um, the, there, it, the wetlands that have been flagged are between where the houseboat is right now and the lake. So in order to take the boat out and put it in, they have to cross that wetland. So I don't know whether First Light uh, supersedes that or not, but I can tell you that my understanding and the applicant uh, uh, engineer as well, uh, or surveyor, I guess, has indicated that First Light, their line of jurisdiction is the property line. And the wetlands are within the property. So I, I don't think that there is an overlap in this situation um, because it's not in the First Light um, zone, if that's true. And I, and I haven't spoken with the guy. We were going to meet with him. And, <laughs> Yeah, he just didn't co reconnect. I was hoping to do that today. Even. Off of first um, light, so so um, that's what's happening with, with that. Um, I, I guess so, that this whole thing could be handled separately. And as I said, usually we do handle uh, violations separately, violations if it is that, you know. Uh, but we, we handle those separately uh, as a rule of thumb. It's just that a lot of times if there is an application like this, it, it is an opportunity to kind of yeah. right. put it to bed. You know? Are you going to say something? Can I say something? Sure. So um, uh, we contacted Newtown because you know, Monroe's, Monroe's got six or seven properties on the water. Yeah. Newtown's got a ton of them, and you, you mm -hmm. kind of went the same path in a different direction. The people in Newtown said they basically let First Light take the lead on it because they're so onerous that but they, they definitely bring whatever First Light says to the Wetlands Commission for review and, and sign off. But that First Light is, you know, is, is now really stepping up what they're doing on the waterfront. Now, one of the things that Scott's bringing up is that First Light's also um, requiring registration on all docks pre-existing or, you know, so that they can get an inventory of what's out there. Because they, you know, you go to Lake George, every dock's got a, a tag on it. You go to Lake Zor, no docks have tags on them. So part of what we're going to be doing as part of this process is going to First Light and registering the dock. They come out, they do an inspection, they make sure, you know, make sure that everything is appropriate. And then they give us a certification for the dock. So that would, you know, so that would be basically cover the area within their project bound, you know, that, that would cover anything within their project boundary area. And then, you know, what we're proposing is once we get the first light certification and sign off from first light, that then we bring that back to the commission at, because the water, you know, like rebuilding a dock 
and the water dependent use we think is uh, permitted as of right so we then get a you know bring the first light stuff in and and get the commission sign off on on that so it, it, it's a it's a tough um, process because basically if you look at what we've got there everybody on a whole sh street's got to do the same thing you know I mean nobody's got to sign off on their dock on that whole street everybody needs to get a sign off everybody's in a whole different you know in, in the same basket so it's not just us it's us because we're bringing an application in but you know really what we you know what, what, what has to happen is me and every one of my neighbors and then everybody in Newtown and Oxford and all that have to do it. Now, coincidentally, um, the people that are buying the house, their parents live across the lake in Oxford and they just got their dock approved through First Light. It took them about six months to go through the process of going back and forth with First Light, but they were putting a brand new dock in. We've got an existing dock foundation that was there, so it's a hybrid of, of you know, we've we've resurfaced our existing dock and restructured, rebuilt the retaining wall around the existing dock. So we've got more of a hybrid situation, but that's, you know, we're basically hoping to leave all the improvements for the most part in place as they are. There's a couple sections of old dock that they may want you know like there's an old foundation for it's 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 a little quirky because it's um just because there basically was a boat rental business on that whole front so there's a whole series of docks and foundations that ran from one end of the property to the other that you know dating back to the 30s so it, it's but it's it's um so it's it but it but basically what we're trying to do is you know, get this going. The the houseboat, they don't, first light doesn't regulate boats, not in any, uh, the DMV regulates boats, first light doesn't regulate them. It's a, you know, it, it, there's no way that the Wetland Commission is going to have jurisdiction over whether you can take a boat in or out of the, you know, put, put a boat in the water, you know, because otherwise you'd have a wetland hearing for every boat that came to the town dock and got dropped in so right but what I was pointing out in this case in order to put the boat in you have to cross wetlands I got to cross wetlands every time I go to the town dock and get go into the water because the water is wet and there's it's wetlands you know so I think it's it's just one of those areas of, of you know exempt use it, it, you know it's a water dependent exempt use so um, you know that's the uh, the kind of the place that we're Viewing this from, and and you know, um, you know, it, it, it's you know, um, the, what what I think what, what's not coming through from Bill's report is that the those that area that's flagged as wetlands is basically sand and gravel cobbles that are at the base of the river along the, the waterfront. So it's not like um, a marshy area or grassland area or anything like that. It's something that, again, when that might be wetlands this year because it exists this year, it may not be there next year because the, when the river flows, it creates a different channel and that gravel washes into the river. Then sometimes we end up with more gravel. I mean, if you look at you know some of the the deltas and some you know Mississippi and things like that, you know they have hundreds of acres created and lost in wetlands area. Go to Milford Beach and you you know people. You, is the houseboat brought directly up into that spot, or is it pulled out of the out of the uh, boat launch and, and towed over there? No, no, it, it's brought directly up and then goes directly in. We how put long it on, that, How we, long has that been going on? We put it on. Um, on uh, on like a PVC pipe and, and cool, slide right it in. Up. Yeah. How long has that been going on? Just we just started it because it we just we've only owned the thing for two years. So you know, all my neighbors pull docks in and boats in and out. You know, it's it's not like we're doing anything that not everybody else in the entire lake is is doing. You know, so 
it's just that, you know this commission doesn't have a lot of history of dealing with the lake you know it's 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 a very small segment of our community so are there any other commission questions from the commission yeah, if I could find the notes. I had um, <coughs> a few A few comments concerning your comment to Scott's comment. <laughs> um, in, in on the first under under A one. Um, because you, you mentioned 4.1.C in, in the regulations, that includes boat anchorage or mooring. Now, I went to a class, a four hour class, on section four, and one of the things they said was excluded was docks. Anchorage and moorings are in the water, and um, docks are on the land or attached to the land. So I just want to let you know that that's a little bit of a, a glitch that we got there because you're, you're claiming that it is definitely, um, I don't know if it's non-permitted or not what it, whatever it is. So I just wanted to let you know that that is a detail that is not, not correct. Um, and uh, 4.2 point B, you mentioned that and re that really has no bearing on this application at all. Um, so just wanted to... Yeah, well, as John said, we will be coming back with an application or whatever for non-regulated mm -hmm. uses along the lake. So I think... What else was done on that property besides, I think you said you rebuilt a dock from, on, on an old, old foundation? Is that I believe what that was? Trying. What else was done? You said we that surfaced, point? right? We surfaced the dock? Yeah, we. we uh, no. So there's two. There's. Um, where are we? So in this section right here. Bill, do you have the, the, the survey that he, that he uh, did that shows it? I have a paper copy. You didn't put that on the sticker. Uh, all right, well. I mean, this, show, this shows it. Um, the, so this is a section of dock. The foundation, the old foundation of the dock started just about here to the left of where that little hand is. And it ran across all the way to this section over here. Mm -hmm. These stairs were there. Um, we put new treads on these stairs. We put new decking on this dock. But the 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 wood you know the wood stringers for the stairs and the dock and the foundation was already in place. So we basically took the wood off and put trex decking on it. Uh, same with this set of stairs here. In this set of stairs, the um, the uh, stone wall was starting to erode into the. You know, stuff was eroding through the stone wall into the lake and so we put um, uh, a concrete uh, retaining wall, precast retaining wall blocks and dropped them across here to stop the, um, the you know, which basically we got the ones that hold the, that create a, a, a perimeter and hold soil in the top so that we could create a stabilized finite edge um, and then resurface the, the, the wood dock here with Trex decking. So um, that's pretty much what was done in this section here. This floating dock uh, is now on the shore over here. This was actually two docks that were screwed together. It was over here at one point, um, uh, it would, and, and it's basically two four foot wide docks that, that are eight feet long that got screwed together into an eight by eight dock. And that's basically, that 
It's got, you know, it's an old dock with barrels under it, and we pull, pull it up on shore. I'm not sure if we're using it or not using it at this point. We may um, put it out into the water as a finger dock coming off of this dock, you know, um, so it would extend from this dock out into the water so that you could park two boats going in this way instead of one boat going this way. But that's the first light question. I'm not sure whether we're allowed to do that or not. So until I meet with them, uh, you know, the, the, those two docks are kind of up in the air. If I can't use them, I'll pull them out of the water and dispose of them, you know. Um, so, and the other thing that we, we did is we built the, um, the houseboat and, and that, you know, we'll, we continue to launch from this area into the lake over here. So, any other questions while I'm up? No, that's it. Thank you. Is this a public hearing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just making sure I thought oh, Lois okay. was reading her oh, notes. Go ahead. You, can, you can do exhibits. If I come up with anything else, I'll let you know. Jenny, any other comments or questions from the commission? Can you do exhibits, please, if you don't mind? Uh, sure. I appreciate it. Okay. We left off with exhibit three. So, exhibit four um, was a plan set, six sheet plan set for site, and site improvements by Spafford Jorkland. The document was dated February 12th. 2019, the revision date was March 20th, 2019. Uh, exhibit five was a letter to John Kimball regarding the wetland delineation by Bill Kenny. The document was dated March 16th, 2019. Exhibit six is a response to town engineer and commission comments by Bill Carboni from Spatha Jorklin. The document was dated March 20th, 2019. Uh, exhibit number seven is uh, updated town engineering comments by Scott Schatzline. Um, the document was dated March 13th, revision date March 25th. Exhibit number eight were the health department comments by Rich Jackson, document dated March 8th, 2019. Exhibit nine is an eight and a half by 11 sheet detail of the washout area. Exhibit 10 is a application notification to the town of Newtown Inland Wetland Commission by Nick Clark's back to Jorklin, document dated December 19th, 2018. And that's it. Thank you. Do you have any plans in the near future to build, um, to dig this, the replacement, not replacement, but the other test hole <clears throat> um, near the recharge galleries? Yes. That Scott had requested. Um, we're speaking of this area right in here, mm -hmm. and as Scott had commented on that, that that will have to be done, uh, if not today, which is not happening, but before we get a building permit, just to verify <clears throat> the suitability of it. There is a uh, test hole somewhat near it that shows adequate soils, so we just have to verify that that's the condition under that, and we will do that. So that's... Okay, to submit that data. After yeah, as long as they're, they're saying that, and it, as long as that's done before the building permits issue. Okay. I was thinking um, that since there's so much, I mean, I'd go all the way up to the fence right now, or the, the proposed fence. Mm -hmm. um, and that you said in the last hearing, I believe that you were going to leave as much of it as you could beyond the grading as natural as it is now. Am I correct on that? Well, I'm not sure. We are proposing, uh, this is the septic area. Mm -hmm. So that will be grass, and right. that would extend down from the toe slope down to this, this would be grass, unless there is a major tree there. Most of this is, is not large trees. Obviously, if there's large trees in this area, which is, we're not changing the grade on, we'll preserve the trees. But okay. 
basically it's, it's I'll get rid of the undergrowth and plant and keep large trees. <clears throat> okay, that um, I was thinking that since we are removing a great deal of the overgrowth, um, that perhaps it would be a good idea to help define. I know I realize that there's going to be a split rail fence there, mm -hmm. but either in front of or behind the. Um, the fence, but behind the swale, that it might be good to have low-growing bushes that were sol soldier-forced that would help not only to fortify the swale, but to also set a, a second line of demarcation um, and do a little filtering, since well, so much of the, um, the above gradient forest is being removed. Would you want it in front of or behind this? <coughs> Shallow swell. Um, I'm not sure where the best place would be to be. I mean, I, I would like to see it there, and where it would be best. Ross, what do you mm -hmm. think? Behind the swell or in front of the swell? If it were in front of the swell, it would prevent anybody from filling it in as rapidly. Probably but maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> below it, the low side of the swale. The, the low side of the swale. See, we had taken the, we, we showed as the swale and the silt fence, and the silt fence during construction being tied to the split rail fence. But you're saying you want this, it would be swale, bushes, and the silt fence? I think so. Just, this is, remember I said there was that area that the DOT had been using for that, that's in here, and then this is the, the area down. It's this kind of stuff. Let's look at the other plan. Go back to the. Uh, yeah, because that's up by the road. I'm talking way yeah. down, yeah. much closer to the. To Trying the to lake. get clear on what we're doing here so that I understand it. These are requests, they're not necessarily no, no, no. <laughs> anything other than investigatory. Is the swale stippo? Is this? For clarification, again, John Kimball, is the swale staying or is it a during construction thing? And is then we're taking the swale out or filling it I thought it I in. heard him say they wanted, they wanted it to stay. That way it would catch any... Uh, stay but not be maintained. Right. Yeah. Well, we were hoping it could, it could be a nitrogen filter. It could do um, a lot to keep the pollutants out of the lake. The last thing we again, need more algal blooms and stuff. This is looking, obviously, towards the lake. And this is... You got a lot of this vegetation in there. All right, so basically put some low growing bushes, so make like a two foot planting area or so in front of the in front of the split rail fence that has the low growing bushes and then have the swale in front of that. Is that what you're thinking? Either that or the low growing I'm I'm not sure which way would be would be that that sounds fine to me. Um, I got? just like the second line of demarcation besides well, I mean, the if if the swale is going to be a permanent fixture, you probably want to have it someplace where you can get to it and, and, and break it out if it's... No, that's what we're saying we don't want to do. We would rather have it become vegetated if you got leaf litter in and there. fill it in and, and then not be used anymore. Well, yeah, but by that time, the site will be completely stabilized, presumably. Well, if it uses any fertilizers on the lawn, however, it goes right into the lake. Well, not right into the lake, because it does have all that vertical distance. Right, <laughs> so right. it doesn't have much time to filter out when it's going that vertically. Um, so that's what the swale was, in my mind, to help prevent, prevent pollutants from traveling downhill. I don't want to make it the responsibility of the homeowner to try to keep that cleaned out. I think we're going to have more problems with him working that close to our demarcation than uh, it's worth. What do you have for sun back there? How much? Well, in the second half of the day, you do. But obviously, it's, it's east from it's when the sun comes sun. up it's on the east. Gonna, you're going to have sun the whole day. There's no, no, no sun along the fence. And then, this is the, the end of the fence. Is right there. Will be. Well, be Right in here. Where the fingertips are. So, you know, when you asked about what are we taking out of there, not a lot. But, um, 
that area there is approximately where this fence swale type of thing would be. But that's only, what, 20 feet? We're talking about a lot longer than that on the property. No, no, no. no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is just that's that's just a small yeah. Sac yeah. section of it, yeah. Right, but I mean, again, you have, you know, chunk undergrowth. So um, part of the... Part of the reason I put the fence where I put it was it was undisturbed area. Mm -hmm. So, like, even when we were talking last time about how we were going to do the silt fence, I was proposing to put the, the split rail fence in and then um, staple the silt fence to it and then put hay bales on top of the silt fence so that we didn't have to dig up that area. So. I guess I'm getting a little lost now. Well, um, I mean, are you talking, when you're talking about that, you're talking about a permanent fixture? Or no, just no, the, temporary the, during well, the, build, the building? The, during the building construction, that would be, but the swale that I thought we were doing was going to be at the edge of the grading limit line further uphill <laughs> as an interim measure. So we're, so we're not clear, uh, as yes, all I'm not. trying you to say. so right. You are so right. Mm -hmm. So I, I was envisioning that we would have a swale at the edge of grading limits which isn't necessarily our, our LO, LOD, because we're not grading all the way to the edge of the LOD. Right. So we, we were basically going to dig a swale, push, and, and you, you were right, because you, you were talking about a berm. Mm -hmm. He's talking about a swale, and I'm talking about basically pushing the edge of the topsoil at the, at the bottom toe of the grading limits up so that it, it creates a water bar basically and stops the major flow of water from going down to the lake and then putting silt fence beyond that and then again putting silt fence at the at the um the line thing i agree with you is, is the permanent um swale water bar is just gonna even no matter how perfect you build it it's gonna well no it's gonna fill if you build it it's gonna fill with water and water's gonna start to run and then it's gonna over top in one spot and it's gonna create more erosion. Well he was talking okay. about breaks well, yeah, every fifty feet. Hmm? He was talking about breaks every fifty feet. We're, right, just so we don't have a large one point with a large discharge. Where is this on um, this anywhere on the site, is this swale going to end into a spot where it's gonna start sheet flowing again and not I mean you're I think it's silly because all you're doing is concentrating the water in one spot where it naturally wants a sheet flow over the whole entire area. So you put in a swale and you're going to have a discharge point at once where the swale ends and you're just asking for more, more erosion there. Right. So basically what I was looking at to your point is during construction putting a swale at the edge of the grading limit um, for the lawn and the yard. For yes. the, like that would be 30 feet up from where this, this fence is. So that would give the area between the fence and the grading limits time to stabilize and grass in. We'd have our, our we didn't even want to penetrate the ground other than where we were going to put the fence posts in. Put the fence posts in, put the silk fence against it, stake in hay bales mm -hmm. to provide uh, a second line of defense in case our swale is overtopped. Build the swale for a, a, a swale with a Topsoil berm and silt fence behind it for the con for to take any of the construction runoff. Once once we've got the yard stabilized and the and the area between the swale and the the split rail fence mm -hmm. stabilized, then, then the, 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 the swale gets graded out, and then we're talking a grading area of three feet that has to stabilize. So we've got stabilized lawn above and stabilized lawn below it, and a good practice on how to get this thing done and a complete sheet flow instead of concentrating water at water bars every 50 feet. So I think it should address everybody's concerns. We just have to, sh we'll, we'll write a, de uh, uh, draw a detail up or provide a detail as, as part of this that Bill and Scott can go over and make sure that they're comfortable that we've, that we've captured what we're talking about. The plan that we have here is based on what was the comments at the last year. But this, we can remove this, these swale and that in this area. We'll move it up to this. We're going to show silt fence now and create what John has. Yeah, we discussed it at the split rail fence the last meeting. That was at Jeff's suggestion. Right. Mm -hmm. 
But yeah. I mean, if you want to go at, I think it, a slope. it makes more sense to do it where he's got the little hand right now, because that the other is already. It's undisturbed. It's undisturbed. We don't plan on disturbing. Well, that's where so, the path is, right? So, yeah. So why, there's a path, but there's moss and all kinds of stuff grown in there, and it's very tightly woven. So why go in and unweave it to put in? You know, look. It, I like these drawings and all, but you get into something like this. We dig a channel like this, straight vertically up a hill, a oh, silt fence. What does it do to us? It creates a water problem, and we end up with a water problem running straight downhill and then blowing out the silt fence at the bottom, you know? So they put it on because everybody wants to see a lot of black silt fence because they feel better about it, and it creates a place where it's, you know, but from a practical standpoint, you know, if you need silt fence here, you should be doing Vs, all, you know, every 50 feet so that we can catch the water. If you have an overflow, it overflows out the ends and catches to the next V and then the next V, but not directly down a, a, a vertical slope because this will create, I will basically cut the root base there and create a river, which will then continue to wash out forever into the future. And I've just basically ruined 50 years of, of ecosystem on this slope. In doing that, you know, so uh, I'm in favor well, there's of a silt fence here, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, I don't think that's what we were. I don't think that's I know. I know we're not he's talking not about that. I'm just talking about the practical I get reality you. Of, of these. Oh, plans, I understand what you're you saying, know? but no. That's so, why I like so, my compost berms. So what what I'm talking about here is 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 basically doing a split rail fence with silt fence stapled to it and then hay bales stapled, staked at the bottom to hold the flap of the silt fence down all the way along this section and come, you know, and, and potentially coming up here enough so that we don't get the water coming around and just drifting off at the end of this thing down running out this driveway, you know. But then for construction purposes, coming along here and doing a berm with silt, with silt fence also right here. So that basically catches the water that would be running down the hill and provides a catchment spot. And then after we get this area stabilized and this area stabilized with you know growth that's solidified, then we knock down the berm and, and stabilize the berm. If we want some bushes, I'm not adverse to putting some some either bushes or ground cover or you know something. Um, here it, it's not a bad idea and would be probably a very nice feature because you're gonna have people coming up, driving up this driveway, and their lights are gonna go into the house here. So having low shrubs is probably a positive feature that will help incorporate some wetlands issues and a nice landscape feature to the, to the property. So, cause you can look over the low shrubs and still see the lake beautifully, you know? So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, actually a very good idea to, to do something like that. And, I, don't, I think if, you know if we didn't suggest it, it would probably end up getting put in anyway. You know, so. Um, but I think it caused enough trouble for the immediate. So ultimately, <laughs> so ultimately it's down the road. It's going to be long, right up to that trail. Up to the split rail fence. Yeah. It, it, it potentially, you know, there's not a lot of lawn area in this thing. You know. Um, you know, but if, if, I mean, if there's trees in there, which is hard to see, you see, we're directing the people to, other than the areas where we're grading, to not cut any mature trees down, basically, is because we, we don't want to pull the roots out, we don't want to d disturb it, so if, if there's mature trees in any of the area beyond this silt fence, if this area has a mature tree in it, the tree would stay, because we we're not you know we're not advising to take any of the mature trees out. So I don't know what's in here. I think, but I know there is some debris from the um, former cottage that, that that's in this area that's got to get cleaned up. You know, there's glass bottles and brick and the old fireplace and some appliances and fun stuff like that. So 
we'll have to clean up some stuff in here. But any other? Is all of the water from the impervious surfaces being directed to, it doesn't appear that it is, to the underground galleries? No. Um, so that means we are talking about more surface water sheet flowing off this property. That used to be absorbed. Way, it, this, this is a high point. This is a low point. So all of this area is draining back to this catch basin. Similarly, this is coming into here and out. So yes, all of the um, driveway is going through this rain garden, uh, the recharge facilities. But not the house. The house, the roof, is coming into this one. Driveway to this. That roof leader goes into this. It's another recharge system here. So there's two systems. Mm -hmm. One basically gets the driveway, the other basically gets the house. Well, you're picking up half the house into the driveway one too. You got this you got another you got a leader coming off the house into the bigger one. Right. Got the, yeah, there's another so one you're, here. You're picking up there may one. be some area over here I don't know exactly what the roof breaks are. There may be you know, if it goes this way Ridge line is this way, we may not pick up a little bit right here. But essentially, the house and the driveway are going into those two recharge systems. And I believe on the detail sheet, we give the calculations for uh, the sizing of that. <clears throat> I believe we touched on this last time too, but it still kind of perplexes me. Um, was the client asked if he or she would be interested in moving the house further out of the regulated area, um, which would, because of the, the current topography, if you move the house up to the south, um, I guess, yeah, to the south, You'd move a great deal of the house out of the regulated area, and you wouldn't have as much grading in the back. It would also allow for a larger porch, which I know if I were on a lake, I would want that whole end of my house to be porch that looked out over the lake. Um, and it would allow for a, a yard back there that I would also like to look out over the lake with. Just asking as an alternative. Owner of the house has asked if we move it a bit closer to it. So this is kind of a compromise between, you know, getting a nice view of the lake and keeping it out of the regulated area. We find it, feel that it kind of balances those. Because that could be an alternative to. Uh, lesser impacts. And I know in your comments you said that it does, you don't need to provide alternatives because there's no direct impact, but that's not what our regs say. Our regs say it doesn't have any, direct or indirect has no bearings, it's just impacts. So that could be an alternative to um, fewer impacts on the up Upland Review and the wetland area. Um, but I won't belabor it. Okay, so I get that ends my questions, I think. Okay, anything else from the commission? Okay, this is a public hearing. I will open up, uh, oh, we did them. I see this. Yeah. Is there anybody in uh, attendance here tonight that would like to speak in favor of this application? Is there anybody here who would like to speak in opposition to this application? Is there anybody here who would like to make a comment of a general nature in regards to this application? Seeing none. Again, what we're asking for is an approval of the development that's shown on the site with the caveat that the area along the docks in this area be handled as a separate hearing for the application or whatever it is for uh, 
uses by right or non-regulated uses. The development of the site itself, the house, is well away from the river, and we have multiple, although changing, uh, erosion control measures. And uh, again, we believe that we will, as a condition of approval, Scott and I can work out the changes on the uh, erosion control. But we are asking for approval of this site plan. Is there anything else that I need to do before we close the hearing? Okay. okay. So public hearing is closed. Item for deliberation. Say again. Right, I was closing that public hearing. Oh, um, I thought it's you said we're going to deliberate. No, held for deliberation. Oh, sorry. I'm making that up as I go along. You didn't have to call it. <laughs> no, there's my hearing. IWC 2019-06-269 Purdy Hill Road, 25 unit, age, 25 unit age restricted housing with associated improvements and conversion of existing building on property to a two bedroom home. Burr Corner, Beaver, Beaverbrook, LLC, Twombly. Continue from our last meeting. Thank you. Trying to repeat myself. Right. Record reflect back to Shamar's himself. Uh, at 828. Sorry, taking a break. Say that again. Oh, recusing. Oh. Bill Carboni's Path York and Associates. Engineers for the developer of this project. I'm a professional engineer licensed in this state. Again, this is a continuation of our prior hearing. At that time, there was a series of comments made by Scott to which we responded and comments by this commission. Getting back to what this the overall project, this is Purdy Hill Road, Cutler's Farms Road. This was the uh, site of a previous development that was approved by Planning and Zoning, and uh, this commission has been recorded on the site. It was a similar type development with single-family homes. This proposal has uh, multiple family, three units to a building, and what we have done with this is uh, Septics are in this area, what used to be the detention basin. The detention basin has been moved over to this area. Going through Scott's comments to this, um, there was a discrepancy as to the dates, which is a minor comment. Um, as in our response letter last time, we provided the health department uh, letter. Again, there's primarily no comments on this. You're, you're on the wrong one, I think. That's, you got the wrong, you're back on the, the um, bridge road now, right there. That's the one that had the issue with the map date. I guess what I'm asking, where where are you? I guess. <laughs> Tell me what number you're on. Um, let's start with uh, two, the, the C2, the uh, survey. Okay. Right. Yeah, because the administrative have all been, those have all They've been. They've been, been answered or yeah, okay. one way or another. Those were all. There was a comment from Scott saying that the A2, T2 survey for this uh, project should be updated. Um, in a discussion that we had, Scott and I again, uh, before this meeting, uh, 
he was looking primarily at the A2 survey, that the boundary of the project has not been changed. <coughs> the project, the survey that was done for this is about one year and nine months ago. And the only changes that have happened to the site is <coughs> moving the stockpiles for the nursery uh, operation. Uh, as to the uh, boundary itself, what I'm presenting is an affidavit by the owners of this property saying that there has been no changes to the boundary and uh, the survey that was submitted is an accurate depiction of the, uh, the property lines, which we feel is satisfactory to, uh, as opposed to going to the land records and making sure there's been no changes. Obviously, the property owner, owners know that. Um, the second comment was, the wetlands flags and numbers should be indicated, in particular, in the area on Sheep's Meadow. I do not have a display for that. But the piping from the detention basin goes down. These two lots goes into the cul-de-sac of Sheep's Meadow and then hooks into the current outlet of the street system. So we're not doing a new outlet. We are improving it. The, uh, Bill, she's going to load that because that, that's important to show the yeah, commission. Yeah, I think I have that basically the, the CD with um, the It's easier just to click the arrows up above. This one? No, go to the center of the page. Right there, there's arrows. You hit those, you get each page. Doesn't have it. It doesn't. All right. I'm sorry. That's what that was the newest electronics mission. Okay, we can work with this one. This has been rotated. The plant has been rotated, but this is the detention bond. This is the outlet pipe coming out of the detention basin down here across this lot, across Sheep's Meadow, and into the existing outlet at this point. Um, there is, you can see part of the wetlands line coming through here, winding up over in here. This was just cut off, but this is primarily the wetlands line. This is not our property, and uh, we really have no right to go in there and reflag it. This is take this wetlands line is taken from the original subdivision for Sheep's Meadow. It was done by Larry Edwards, and he had this flag. He had it mapped out. At the time that was done, flags and flag numbers were not the norm. We just, or anybody, would just locate the edge of wetlands at the time by a soils engineer, but they did not have wetlands flag numbers or that, and they were located by survey, but that's when he owned the property. So what we're saying is that wetlands line that is in that area uh, is basically the best we can do. We can't go onto somebody else's property. Further, all of this area, all the development in here, the, the pipes, 
the outlet control structures, the changes to it, the easements are all approved. They were approved as part of the last project, and there are no changes on any of this. The detention basin was in a different location, but it also went to this manhole. So everything down there has previously been approved. Um, another comment was that when we were referring to a existing drainage easement on sheet B2, which are these in here, the drainage easements down there, we had a apparently an incorrect uh, reference to a volume and page of the record of the town clerk. Uh, we will verify those and change them accordingly. Uh, Scott had also asked that the uh, utilities in the area of Sheep's Meadow down in here be located. Um, it was then modified to prior to construction. So when we call, have call before you dig go out there and locate all the utilities, we will have them mapped and added to our plans. The, uh, there are many other comments in here which Scott has crossed off. Um, He asked for a change in the location of some of the wetlands markers. I really don't know how to get back to my original one. But in particular, in this area, as we had discussed last time, the uh, LOD line was to be modified so that it went below the septic system or the reserve area. Again, as we discussed then, that was going to allow, uh, should it ever be necessary to put in the, re uh, the reserve areas, that this would be already approved by this commission. So we've also shown in here the proposed tree, tree line or what will remain in the tree line, which is currently up in this area. It will be cut back to there. We are showing wetlands marking across here. We then follow the 100 foot setback from the wetlands. Scott's suggestion, I think it's a good one, is we come from this wetlands marker down to this corner in there and follow the tree line, which that will be modified accordingly. Um, Scott also had some comments about the detention analysis and making revisions to it, which after discussions with him, it was determined that some of the neighbors that front onto Sheep's Meadow, these two lots, were concerned about the amount of water that would be coming onto their property after the development. Um, the majority of the water from this site is going to be carried through the detention basin and then piped down to Sheep's Meadow. So the only thing that is going to these two property owners is the downhill side of the road and the downhill side of the uh, detention basin. So for the See, for the existing flows to the first house on Sheep's Meadow, according to our calculations, the current flows to their range from 2 CFS to 10.9 in a two years from a 100 year storm. This will be reduced to 0.3 to 1.2. This is approximately 12% of what currently goes there. So there will be a very significant change to the volume coming in here. Right now, flow from Curtis Hill all the way down comes onto that property. Obviously, the road is cutting that off. For lot on nine sheep's metal, that's the second house up, it currently ranges from 0.7 to 3.3. This will be reduced to 0.5 to 
2.5. This is about 73% of what currently goes there. So uh, those two lots will have a benefit of reduced runoff from the, uh, from the site because of our uh, detention basin. The, the commission just needs to recognize that um, some of these comments, you know, it's kind of hard to review uh, the hydrology and just speak to wetlands issues. I mean, what he's talking about really isn't a wetlands issue. But when I do my review, I do the drainage reviews because mm -hmm. these comments go to P&Z as well. So he's talking about an area which really it's not under your purview. You know, so I just wanted to point that out. Okay. But, but just to, to help them, I try to do the review up front. It's mm -hmm. for both commissions, and we try to work, it, work out those comments early on as what happens as, as part of this process, even though it's not really within your jurisdiction. So I just wanted to point that out. But it, it, it's it is something that could come up during this hearing if the neighbors make a uh, comment. Um, Scott also made a comment about the water quality flow. Uh, the 2004 standards for water quality. Um, on prior uh, projects, we have stored the water quality volume below the outlet from the uh, detention basin. Uh, Scott and I have agreed that this is most likely not the best way to do it because of other things like that. So in this case, what we have done is we've taken all the street drainage and run and driveways and run it through a mechanical separator. In this case, it's a uh, one constructed by Contact Engineering Solutions. They have a variety of sizes. We chose a size that would treat the water quality flow, which is what the 2004 uh, manual calls for. The question then became, how much can you take through there without re-disturbing the, uh, the sediments that are uh, been accumulating in here? Um, this is not something that's in their net normal catalog, so I contacted the manufacturer's representative and told her what we were doing. and. She came back, I said, what the flow is, two year, that's easy. 100th year, year was the problem here. And what the cover is from the top of the mechanism to the ground surface, what these units do is they have bypass uh, facilities built into this. And what they do is they allow the water to build up inside the unit and pass out slowly. In low flows, there's no buildup, but in a 100-year storm, this builds up. So the amount that this could pass is a function of how deep we bury this. So based on the design as we have it, um, that unit would be able to pass a 27.2 CFS. In a 100-year storm, going into that is 22.7, so we're maybe at 80% of that capacity. Um, the email from the manufacturer I will add into the engineering report as Scott requested, and I'm going to try to get the calculations used to pr produce that answer. That is sometimes very complicated, but we will try to keep it under two pages. Um, at the prior hearing, we asked that the pipe sizing where the runoff from the sheep's meadow flow meets our flow to be added in, which we did, but we didn't give, in the report that was submitted last week, we didn't give the, the details of that. I will add that into the engineering. The results are obviously the same, but again, those, that's something that was already approved. Um, Scott was questioning, and I gave you some wrong information, as to what we're doing with the roof leaders and the footing drains and through here. That pipe that we had moving across here and going out there was going in 
in that direction, it was the roofs from all these buildings going into the detention pond. The footing drains go back this way and come out here and here. Um, that's a technicality that we'll have to, it's a matter of relabeling it correctly. Scott also asked that there is a, a stone, that there's a decent footing drain discharge coming out here with a bleeder pad at the end of it. That one wasn't a particular problem because it's still going into our property and into our wetlands. But there is another one here, which was Scott was more concerned with because it's not our property, on the other side of the stone wall. Although all of this in area in here is wetlands, it's just not our wetlands. So he asked that that stone bleeder, which is basically a three by three pad full of stones for energy dissipation, be replaced with a level spreader. What we'll do here is put in, a, obviously, a pillow of the stone wall, a three foot wide by 15 feet long uh, stone energy dissipator, which will uh, diffuse the water over a larger area. Since this is a footing drain and not a roof drain, you don't get high velocity flows out of it. The, when it rains, the roof leaders are immediate. The footing drains, it has to percolate through the soil so you get an attenuation of the rainfall. So uh, we don't think that that's particularly a problem, but we will change it to a, um, a level spreader. Again, uh, we're going to relabel for clarity those uh, uh, roof drains and footing drain pipes. And as Scott suggested, we will change it a little bit to avoid some conflicts. Um, the last comment was again about the level spreader. So those were the comments that I that I felt were made at the last hearing. We've answered those, and the primary again, the one about that was the work on this tree line and making sure it's beyond the uh, septic and uh, clearly to mark the wetlands markers where the tree line will remain. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. The pipe that you have going from the detention basin to Sheep Meadow does not exist at this moment, right? You have to install that. Pardon? The pipe going from the detention basin to, to Sheep Meadow has yeah. to be installed. It's oh, not yes, there it is not an existing facility. Okay, how does that, um, is, do you do that with a ditch winch or? No, 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 this is a 15 to 20. Oh, is that, oh it's much bigger than mm -hmm. that, okay. Is there any kind of detail on restoring that area that is going to be disturbed? And we're talking about a pretty significant ditch. It, um, it is, right now it says a lawn, so it will be restored to what they have now. Oh, okay. It's lawn, yeah. That catch basin thing that all the driveway and roads, water is going to, the bottom of that, is it lower than the bottom of that storm that, uh, you mean the discharge at the end of Sheep's Meadow? No. Is it lower than the, uh, what do you call that there, with the blue color there? Tension basin. The the tension detention basin. basin. Like, could it possibly be dumped back in towards the catch basin, the separator, I guess you called it? <coughs> well, the separator's there at the bottom, right? Right, right there. there. So all the water from the road and all the driveways go there. Goes through there and out. And then that goes to the detention basin. There. So the bottom of that is lower than the detention basin where all the water collects and then it rises up and goes in the pipe and goes to the no. detention basin. The treatment device is above the 100 year elevation of the detention basin. So it, it won't back up from the detention basin back through the system. But because of the size of the pipes, and the internal configuration, the flow in will back up in the, the, the structure that goes up to the ground surface. 
going out of here, there will be a large attenuation within that just to cause lower velocities, deposition of the sediment. But to accommodate that 100-year storm, it will build up head in here, which is totally independent of any of the water storage in the basin. So the excess comes out of that? It doesn't come out of it. Doesn't well, I mean, come out of it, it builds up. It does not come out. So there's no pipe that goes from the separator to the detention system? Yes. Yeah. No, I, there is. Oh, there is? Um, yeah, there is. Let me blow that up. Although it doesn't show on here, you can see it. There, this is the last catch basin in the road system. Everything else is feeding to it. There is a pipe from that catch basin to the mechanical separator. It does its stuff. And there's a discharge pipe going out to this uh, uh, outlet, control, outlet structure. But the 100-year storm in this area only goes up to about elevation, I think it's 484. This, the flood elevation, goes up to about 484, 485 in that area. The top of this is above 190. So the hydraulics are not really connected. Oh, there is, although there is, although there is some tailwater in the pipe, that's not what's. It's a headwater or an inlet control for that pipe. I hope that explains it. Yeah. Okay. Is there maintenance instructions for that? Yes. And will they be built into the HOA? I believe they're on the detail sheet. But, uh, but as Guy commented in another thing, there has to be a, a homeowners association for this. We obviously know that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, and when it is uh, set up, there is, I believe on sheet D1, there is a whole maintenance plan for all the facilities in addition to this. And we will provide them with the manufacturer's recommended maintenance of it. A lot of little words on that paper. Don't want to waste trees. <laughs> OK. I believe you. <laughs> That's OK. <laughs> Thank you, anyway. <laughs> Sherlock. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I like this plan. I, I'm very happy that you moved the detention basin from where it was to where it is now. I think that's yeah. a vast improvement. And um, the only question I had was on the detention basin. Should that have a berm down the center of it to divert, to, to channel the water so that it has more time in the detention basin? before it hits the outlet structure? If this was, if the basin was also to do water quality, that would, I would agree with you. It's not doing water, it's only detention? It's only detention. The water quality is taken care of by the separator here, where we are doing water quality flow. Uh, again, that securitous route through the thing would allow for deposition of solids, but in this case, we're not trying we're not accomplishing that in that basin. So, you know, in low flow storms, that's what's going to happen anyhow. But right. Okay. But the detention basin, there's no plantings pr proposed inside it? Yes, on sheet LP1 and 2. I've got it, and it looks bare. The, the bottom of the basin looks empty. There's nothing on what there. What is the date on that plan? 211.19. There's a 320 set of plans that shows uh, extensive planning on both the uh, banks and. Yeah. Okay. I see that there's definitely something on the banks. Okay, but you are saying but that there's yeah, something there's on the There's cattails on the bottom. On the bottom and that. I, I probably do, but it's on the bottom. We can try LP1 and 2. It's, Set date at 3:20. Okay, I'm sorry. That was my fault for looking at the wrong plans. The other ones was on the bottom. So what is it on the bottom? I always like a second line of defense. 
uh, especially since the botanicals are usually only 80% effective at their peak efficiency. So all the stormwater quality that I can get is makes me happier. Person. Right. And again, there's extensive plantings. <laughs> and that should be good. I see cattail. Right. That's it. We wanted plants that are. I don't know. I just. Um, yeah, I believe that is it for the very bottom. It. Yes, it is. Uh, has the potential in spring high groundwater conditions to have a, the wet roots in there. So cattails. So it could be a wet bottom. It could be during spring high groundwater conditions. Uh, the testing that we did in that area shows the groundwater to be within a foot of the bottom. So we have to allow for it. But yeah, it would be. So the cattail should be good there. You're right. Perfect. Okay. That's it. I'm done. Yeah. Anything else from the commission? Yeah. Uh, Doc, I have some exhibits. <clears throat> okay. Um, we left off. We did up to exhibit seven, so we're starting with exhibit eight, um, which is a map plan set, 17 sheets, titled Site Improvements by Staff for Jerkland. Document dated February 11th, 2019, revision date uh, March 20th, 2019. Exhibit 9 is a response to town engineering commission comments by Bill Carboni of South the Jorkland, document dated March 13th, 2019. Exhibit 10 is an engineering report by South the Jorkland, document dated May 23rd, 2016, revision date March 18th, 2019. Exhibit 11 is updated town engineering comments by Scott Schatzline, dated 325. It was 311, document dated 311, revision date 325. Uh, exhibit 12 uh, was easement documentation. The document was dated February 10, 1988. And exhibit 13 is an affidavit regarding existing uh, condition survey accuracy by Ken and Priscilla Twombly. The document is not dated. Thank you. Is there anybody in attendance tonight that would like to make a comment in support of this application? Uh, before you do that, let me just go through a couple housekeeping items just uh, so we don't have to deal with something at deliberations. So just quickly, um, I'm assuming that listening to the, the hearing I had a couple comments in here that were things that were really uh, addressed to you guys. Um, so um, you, you um, I guess you would, you would need to uh, comment about the, the response to the A2 survey. Um, there were a couple, I'm trying to find where they are in a second. Yeah, like item number four, um, just as a uh, standard comment, I had indicated the commission needs to determine if provided wetlands function evaluation was prepared. You know, as discussed with uh, Bill, we, neither one of us were anticipating that you would want that because it was in the previous one, so I'm assuming that you agree with that. All right, so that, that one would come on. Um, the current delineation of wetlands within 16 Sheep Meadow Drive, as he indicated, uh, just a little bit of a clarification, he indicated that it's not their property and they can't do it. That's not really accurate. Um, it's within the easement, they can do it. But what we talked about was it's such a small area, it's within the easement of the existing uh, discharge that it's kind of a mood issue. Yes, there is wetlands there, but they're proposing to uh, appropriately address the outfall with enhancement plantings and uh, a um, uh, 
a riprap uh, surge uh, pit area. Uh, so we had discussed that you know it's probably a mood issue, uh, and that you most likely would not want them to go out there and try to flag that such a small area. So I'm assuming you agree with that as well. Yeah. All right. So that would come off uh, uh, item 4C. Uh, D provide uh, the wetland impact assessment should be rise to eliminate reference. Oh, that was something that. Um, they can just go ahead and we talk about they can go ahead and do. So those were the items that um, before you got too far along with uh, kind of buttoning up the uh, hearing. Okay? Mm -hmm. And the last thing was that the recommendation uh, was for a $20,000 bond. <laughs> okay, is there anybody in attendance here tonight that would like to make a comment in support of this application? Is there anybody here that would like to make a comment in opposition to this application? Is there anybody here who would like to make a comment of a general nature in regards to this application? Come on down. If you wouldn't mind just stating your name and address for the record. Yeah, my name's Kyla Allen. I uh, live at 263 Purdy Hill, so... If we move the map down, it would be um, the house that's being uh, converted to the two bedroom. So I'm right beside that. Um, yeah. Um, I just wanted to know more about what was going to be cut back there. Um, and I was hoping for privacy bushes along the whole entire side there so I, I don't have to see any of it. Um, and I don't know what the square is in the backyard because there's nothing there right now. Um, and is it going to look like the what this is? I'm, I'm just kind of confused on the whole <laughs> thing. The square being that's what this square right behind the number 25, there's like a, a square in the yard right there, yeah. yeah. That's, that's right. Yeah. It, it actually is. It's a building, right? 20. I think that's a building. There's nothing yeah, there right. now. There's oh. the So remember is that, that the applicant will. All right. Okay. Right. The applicant will okay. Those were the, the things you had concerns with? Yes. And okay. just clarification, too, is that questions or the comments that you're making yeah. uh, appear to be more applicable to the planning and zoning process. Right. And so this, this is the Inland Wildlands Commission where they're, they're looking at issues that affect the wildlands. But I, you said they got those comments got passed on, correct? Or yeah, I mean, but what I'm saying to you is that that's really an issue that would come up before planning and zoning. But I'm, I'm sure there's simple, they're simple uh, responses, so let's see if the applicant. Okay. Is there anybody else in attendance that would like to make a comment of a general nature? No, Mr. Carboni. Uh, to answer the questions, that square is the uh, approximate area of the septic system, which is something we have to show on there. Uh, it's not a known because this house is relatively old and there was no as-built for it, but that represents the septic area. Um, the only thing that is being done to this house is internal to the house. We're converting it from a three bedroom to a two bedroom house. We're not planning on doing anything other than remodeling and upgrading to anything on this lot. So we are not planning at this time a, a barrier along this property line. Really, whatever is there now is what will remain there. So there's no, no further clearing or? No further clearing. So there's no external changes to that house at all? Or Possibly that, or the that. outside of the house, but not to the lawn area or, the, or anything outside in the, in the yard. <coughs> okay. Thank you. All right, was there anything else from the commission?
Again, this is a redo of a previously approved project, which we believe in, in, increase, in, improves the site from what we were proposing before. The downhill end will have the septic systems as opposed to the detention basin. Uh, there's approximately the same amount of impervious area. The uh, detention basin is uphill and uh, we believe in a better location. But in general, we think this is a good project for the site and ask for your approval. Thank you very much. Okay, so I will close the hearing. All right, and that concludes our regulated activities for the evening. There's nothing in enforcement tonight. No application hearing determination. Um, moving on to deliberations on completed items from this agenda. Um, do you want clerk to? Uh, oh yeah. 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 <coughs> is everybody okay? Or does someone need to recess while we bring them back? I'm fine. Okay. Okay. You okay? <laughs> For now. I'm looking at you. Yeah. <laughs> There's not going to be another chance. Yes, there will. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the record will reflect that Commissioner Mount has rejoined us at 909. Uh, deliberation hearing, uh, deliberations from items completed in this agenda. First is the subdivision report recommendation to PNZ Commission IWC 2019 04 5 Bridge Road. I move that we direct our staff to draft a letter of approval to PNZ concerning with conditions. Wait a minute, which were, I, I'm sorry. This is their subdivision. This is a subdivision. Okay. So it, well, it's a referral. It, it's a it referral, wouldn't, it wouldn't be an approval, draft. it's a referral. Right. And so my question is. Okay. Positive you know, referral. Yeah, my question is, do you think it's basic enough to move forward, or do you want a, because um, a, a referral is basically just sending your comments. So depending upon what your comments are, in other words, it's not a whole approval letter like you normally get. It's just a right. I don't think we agree right. conditions right. right where our yeah. comments would so be. So uh, if, oh, yes, yes, if, if your comments mm -hmm. that you're referring to the planning and zoning commission are basic enough, where you can give me the the um, you know what you want to say, and you think that that's easy enough, we can just jump right to it. If it's not, and you want it to, you want to see the comments. And you want, do you think they're more um, detailed? Honestly. Then you want me to do a draft. So either way, you need I get to what you're saying. Tell me mm -hmm. so no, that's fine. Well, let's go over our conditions, and then we can decide, right? Our or comments. our comments. comments. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing this to myself for? Because <clears throat> we need you. So if I, I if I could just tell you the the couple of there were a couple of uh, housekeeping type things like yeah the the numbering on the sheets should be done and so those could be um, referral comments as well mm -hmm. I mean I'm sure they'll get resolved by the time they get through PNG anyway so okay so that that will be on there um, I don't know um, the the. The floodplain comments basically, um, I, I, I don't exactly know what it would say. You know, uh, I, I had those comments on there. Uh, it's just informal, it's information for planning and zoning. Um, I, I think that you just want me to relay that information to uh, planning and zoning as part of your referral, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so 
the referral comment would be similar to the comments that are there, only sure. worded so that they uh, are phrased as a referral as opposed to a, right. uh, mm -hmm. uh, something that would be a condition. Ouch. It'll wake me up. So, um, the, and the, the number four, uh, you know, I'm assuming that you would want a comment that says that, you know, they, the, the, the survey plan should show the inter, should label the intermittent water course as an intermittent water course. And that would be for future reference and documentation. So um, I'm assuming you want me to put that on. Uh, number five, uh, same thing there, that the, uh, you would want them to indicate the limits of the the first light should be delineated on the su on the subdivision plan for the benefit of of um, the record and also for any uh, future buyers. The first light, what? Um, the the limits of the first limits. light uh, regulatory. Okay. Uh, just as an aside, I'm sorry to take up more time. First light is made up of who? First Light is the uh, energy company that runs the, um, the the power company that runs the dam and the power generation and all that. So they have jurisdiction over the lake and what goes on because it affects. Well, yeah, when that lake was was and dam was made, it was a long time ago, and they just they owned the whole thing basically. Right? Yeah, yeah, so state it's a gave them. Yeah, and uh, and they have. Well, a guy, like assigned to. Yeah, there's a there's a, a contact person that does their enforcement and does their reviews and, and things that are associated with them. Um, so I did talk to him, but I, right, I remember you said that. I just yeah, I wasn't sure. I just didn't. I didn't get all the information. Yeah, like I don't, you call, so you you find this guy's contact information and call him. Yeah. Right, I guess. Or you call the company and they direct you. First light and, and then they, you know, so I, I have them down as a contact. Cool. I was just, that was out of curiosity. I think. Okay. All right, so we got them to delineate that or suggest that they delineate that in the plan. And then, um, then you jump down to, they addressed everything else. You jump down to considerations that I had put considerations for a referral would be to also add the comment or ask uh, the Planning Zoning Commission to include the notation on their subdivision plan indicating that uh, separate applications to the Inland Wetlands Commission will be needed, uh, will need to be submitted for any uh, regulated activities. Obviously, the first one of the lots is here tonight, so one of them's already done. So, But it's good to put that on the, um, mm -hmm. on the subdivision plan as a standard. And that's what I had written down as far as uh, referrals going to the um, going to the planning zoning commission. Is there anything else you guys would want me to put on there? I didn't have anything. No, I thought you had everything that I had. No, that you had. And are you comfortable Definitely. with me wordsmithing it basically to mm -hmm. what yeah. I just well, said? Well, the theme issue yep. was the other one. Didn't I say that? Yeah, he did. That did was he? the first yeah. one he said. Yeah, I did. Yeah. He said he was going to just reword his comment right, to make okay. it a yes. referral instead of All right, of so yes, you got everything. That... Does anybody have anything okay, else? Okay, so it would be a positive referral, they're... you're yeah. saying. Yep. And the reasons for that? I don't even know. I don't know if you have to. I don't think you have to, come to think of it. But Not in the yeah, referral, right? So. No. Yeah, I thought just for uh, application. So. Yeah, okay. All right, so you're good with that? Yep, yes. Yes. All right, so you need to, why don't you go ahead and um, vote on it. So I have a motion by Commissioner Spence. Second. I have a second by Commissioner Stewart. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Uh, motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay, so we'll move on to Five Bridge Road, IDUC 2019-05. Single family home with associated site improvements, Bridge LLC. So, in this regard, I believe that we would like to, well, somebody else. 
you want me to go through my comments and then you guys can add in? No, I think you should just you should just put your comments in a. Uh, well, are we asking in an approval letter. So are we asking? Are we asking that Scott draft a letter like we normally do on these applications? Correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the commission, not necessarily, the commission is asking that we ask Scott to draft a letter of approval with conditions. Correct. Correct. And those conditions, well, Scott can start with his. Okay, give me a second. What he has, anyway, not not necessarily his. What he has, I should say. Yeah, I'll go over what. Remaining um, items on his list. Um. Because right. they're not so, really his conditions; they're our conditions. Right. So He's the same thing about the first light being delineated. The same thing about the um, uh, this one here. I, 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 we don't need to really get involved with the floodway issue because it's it's not applicable. It doesn't right. affect what it's they're not proposing. in there, right? Um, they're not building it anyway. The um, report. Uh, from the health of, oh, that was done. He, he provided that. So those two were addressed. Uh, then we move down to uh, that the uh, test pit information verifying acceptable conditions for installation of the recharge system should be submitted prior to the issuance of building permit. Um, I'll make it a shall. Um, the proposed washout area, which confused the heck out of me because I didn't know what he was talking about, uh, but... Um, I guess if he just called it a truck wash area, we'd, we'd yeah, get he's it talking about, And it's not a bad <laughs> idea because, no, it's a good idea. you know, a lot of these houses that get built, they dump the, the cement Yeah, they just look for a spot anywhere and yeah, so, wherever. So they're just, it's just an E&S measure. Uh, I just didn't, I thought it was something permanent, but uh, so, so we'll leave that in, um, that it be indicated on the detail sheet. Uh, and delineate it on the plan as he had, as he said he would do, uh, and that the wetland markers uh, and the washout should be included in the details. Uh, the eleven thousand dollar bond uh, recommendation. Uh, I've got. Here's what you guys are going to have to help me out here. Um, provide a detail of the shallow swale, and we need to talk about pin down where it goes. Um, and then the um, and the bushes. So I'm all ears. Tell me, list off where you want this stuff. <laughs> well, I I like their 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 his proposal. Yeah, you don't which, have to change what he proposed. The, the, yeah, but the proposal was verbal. Yeah, it well, was that's, not written that's, down, so uh, that's why we have to nail it down. I now. agree. I agree. So because what, what's did, on the details? She no, I, well, I, you don't I, have to give me. I mean, if. We can listen to the tape. You're right. saying that yeah. as presented, so y'all just well, right. yeah. Let's see if we can remember how it was presented because we are, had so many okay, different he, ideas. He's not gonna. He's not gonna. He's gonna build this. Uh, uh, not a permanent swale. It's a, it's a temporary swale, and he's had. He has bales uh, okay. on top of it to stop anything flowing to that. Oh, the picture's not up there anymore. So, it's basically the the last part of. The bottom of the LOD. Yeah, no, 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 no. The he's not. No, no. Of the disturbed he's lawn. From the disturbed lawn. Yeah. He's not disturbing anything beyond that. The grading. The grading. That's what I'm, I was the trying grading. to remember. Right. right. So that's he, what I wanted. To that's clear. where he said it. That's that was fine because he's gonna. That's gonna be the last thing. So the difference being, just so we're clear, is at the last portion, the last meeting, we discussed the. The swale. The swale down by, bottom, the by the fence. Right. And today we were discussing it, moving at the at the the bottom of the grading. Did because, I not hear then, John say he was going to use them in both places, but then grade out no. the bottom one when he was no. done? No, no, no he no. was going to do the swill at the bottom of the grading. And then <laughs> he's, not the, touching, he's not touching. He's not touching anything on the other side of the grading. That's already natural. So stable up the silt fence and stake in hay bales behind it. That's what he's proposing today. And, and we had bottom. last time we had discussed. The swale being a permanent fixture of the split row fence, but mm -hmm. we've moved away from that because of the clean out issue and the sheet flow. Right, <coughs> yeah, I understand. I'm still concerned about the nitrogen wash off. Um, 
because yeah, we do have here. algal problems in the lake, and the more, more uh, lawn chemicals that wash into the lake, the worse the, the algae problem becomes. So um, the more that we can sift out in advance, the better. Is it going to route somewhere else besides the lake, ultimately? Uh, no. So it's going to get there one way or another. Well, it depends on gives how it more much time to time filter time out, it, right? The longer it gets to sit flows. someplace, the more it, it that's why filters it out. out. That's why he was telling you that where the split rail fence was and, th and that area of silt fence and, and bales was going to stop from the first one that he built. So that the, they have the upper gradient area has, has uh, split, uh, not split rail, it has the uh, silt fence and the bales there. The secondary one, he didn't want to disturb any of the natural environment there, which is great because that was, that's already there. It's already overgrown and it's vegetated and it's stopping anything else from flowing down to the, to the lake. But if he, he goes down and makes a swale, he's going to dig it all up and there's not going to be anything there natural. Mm -hmm. You'd have to wait for it to regrow again, which takes two to three or four years to regrow again. So that's why he was saying he had moved it up to the higher gradient. Because he's not going to, he's not going to put a, uh, he's not bringing any other stuff down below that. Was that first? And he also is not moving any trees. They're not taking any trees out either. So. Well, he's recommending to the homeowner. That yeah. doesn't mean it's not going to happen. The mature. Um, the mature trees. We have to be, you know, we have to be realistic about that. Because if it's a tall tree and it's blocking the view of the lake, it might. Be All right. So I understand this. We got the limited disturbance line here, and there's going to be a split rail fence. Right along that, and a and a silt fence next with, or next and silt fence in front of it with, with a hay, bales, with hay bales, so bales, hay bales, split rail fence, and yeah. silt fence at the LOD. So then you go, at the toe somewhere up here. No, you see that last grading. line. The, the toe grading. Yeah, the, the one that looks like a like a triangle contour. point. That's the, the, the last point of his gradient. He's not, right. He's so not the, grading, the grading's it. here. Yeah. yeah, that's where the so that's, that's where the slight swale is going to be put in with the hay with, bales. With hay so bales. You want the swale with the um, hay bales yeah. mm -hmm. at the limit, the toe slope. Yeah. Right. Temporary swale. So there's not going to be any swales when we're done. No. Well, it's a three-step process. They're going to develop all the lawns. Yeah. That's the I last you, part that's going to come out. I don't necessarily think you want a permanent swale because you're going to get... Yeah, I understand, get, your, I understand yeah. the point. It makes sense. Because the contours are just going to blow it all down down into the guy the next door neighbor's driveway anyway if you, if you build a permanent swale. Yeah, it's, it's just going to flow right down. The water it's going to flow the right down towards that, that driveway and then it's going yeah. right down the driveway right down into the lake. Well, the other thing that, that Mr. Kimball mentioned, and I think is a great idea, we didn't ask for this, was that the silt fence that runs north-south, uh, which is cross-gradient, which makes no sense at all, uh, because there isn't an erosion problem cross-gradient, um, I like the V, his V concepts. I think that would be an excellent um, addition. Uh, remove the way it's presented now on the plan and to... What do you think, Scott? Um, I think that you don't need it yeah, at I all. Think you don't need it at all. I, I didn't really notice it on the plan. Where did that come from? Um, I didn't really yeah, notice it, it. Um, <laughs> on here, but I don't know why they put it on there. Um, th there's no need for a silt fence running perpendicular to the contours. So, I mean, if they were doing work up in, up in here, like this up here is disturbed area. They, but as long they, as when they build the house, they don't go in there, there's not going to be anything running down there. So you don't need silt fence. Right. Yeah. Okay. But they're going to be grading and turning lawn up to it. Well, it's they're... It's a limited disturbance. So they're still going to be grading. Remember and, that this line yeah. is going to be the property line. Yes, and then that other house is going to come to you when they want to develop when mm -hmm. they want to build that house. That's coming to you as an application. So when they do that work, that'll be a new application. For you. So mm -hmm. I just don't I don't know why they sometimes 
it's easier to sometimes the engineers the are put project. on silt fence as really as a construction fence. Yeah, it's why by construction fence they just put silt fence in kind of thing, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, although there's a big difference because silt yeah. fence you yeah, have to tow in, in and mm -hmm. um, uh, the other you don't. Uh, down here, kind of a funky proposal to put the hay bales and with this. Quite frankly, um, in my opinion, you don't need the silt fence. Uh, putting hay bales on top of the flap of the silt fence is not a it's it's not a an appropriate method, and the reason for that is the water will go right underneath the, um, the whole shebang. It'll go underneath the fabric, even though the hay bale is sitting on it. The hay bale is better off sitting on the ground because what will happen is you get better adhesion between the two because it's a or you know it'll start to decompose a little bit, and it, it'll actually sink into the soil a little bit better. If you put the fabric there, it won't sink into the soil. So you have a line where the water goes through. Well, how about if it's not sunk into the soil? You just have the hay bale staked there and the, and the silt fence, fence uh, kind of like staked right, up right next to it. Because the reason he doesn't want to do the silt fence is he doesn't want to dig a channel down into the ground. So, but he's got that proposed here. <laughs> I know. What he's got proposed is a silt fence and then he, instead of digging the channel, he's going to just lie the, the foot of fabric that normally would be buried. Mm -hmm. He's going to lie that on the ground and put the hay bale on top of it. I hear what you're saying. And that's a, it kind of defeats the purpose of having the silk fence. You don't need the silk fence if you're going to do that. And so really all you need to do is put the hay bales and stake them in and... How about double hay... What we're talking about a significant slope. How about double hay bales? Staggered. No? I, I, I mean, I, that, that's, that's worrisome when you have a slope like this and um, well, um, a lot of disturbance. Yeah, but you've already got a line in front of it where the, where the spill is. is to be, out, to be really honest with you, when it comes down to it. <laughs> Actually, he was saying, <laughs> like no, he, wasn't, he was talking about uh -huh. stapling the silk fence to the fence. Right. He's going to staple, he's going to attach the silk fence to the split rail fence. But then he's going to just put the hay bale on top of the flap of the silk fence. Well, suppose he didn't use the flap. Suppose he did it flush, like well, so. Well, then what's the silk fence doing? It's just another line of protection. It's not protecting anything. If it is, if it's well, if it fills up, there? if you get a foot of a foot of uh, silt there, well, it would it, it would it, it would do something. That's, okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm just a foot of silt though. It's not what? a big job. This is not a big job. <laughs> you can easily. Oh, I've sure. Seen, I've seen plenty of seen projects where, yes, where you get two, a, three feet of self in your I've he's not seen it too. A road. He's not yeah, I mean, the reality of the situation is a row of, of hay bales that are staked in, the reality is, are you cleaning it? Because hmm. if the silk gets that much, there's a problem. The, it, yeah, it wasn't designed right. It comes down right. to it make, right. you know, making that's, sure that the contractor cleans the silk fence and checks it on a, on a uh, regular basis. That's what it comes down to. And it's a very difficult thing because um, it's really hard to get people to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, some, some contractors will do it and they're really on it. And, um, and then it's also hard to control because we, what are we going to do? Um, you, you, really what we do is we send them notices and then if there's damage as a result, then they have to pay the cost to... I mean, to the, yeah, restore. the big problem is, is when the water runs along the, runs along the, the silt fence. Because True. it doesn't go through there. What well, happens I'll is it runs you. down the hill, and if the silt fence is well, parallel I'll, with the, with the, with the contour. contours, it runs along the contours to the part, point where you see that little point right there? Mm -hmm. It's going to run along there. It's going to hit that point right, right to the lowest point. It's going to accumulate there, and it, the sh Blow it excuse up. me, right. it's the fan. So it's going to pile up there, and it's, so and I we're going to have what, a huge gully what, down the what side. What you of would do would be is to put is to put you know crossbars and come out. No, no, hold on a second. Hold but on. I think it's over. It's very simple here. All you have to do is put silk fence. You follow the contour. So the silk fence follows this contour and then follows it going this way. But isn't that on the other side of the disturbed area? He said the old road? Isn't yeah, that well, what that was all about? but they're about? not proposing to do anything down there no. other than just clear out a couple of um, 
uh, some of the the um, the old debris. 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 Yeah, they're getting, they're going to clean up the debris that's but, there from the old. But usually, campsite. what we do with people, is, and I can word this so that if if he wants to control down here, then you you follow the, and it's not the end of the world that there might be a a section where there's a flow along there. As long as you've got a nice one at the, where it flattens out, which is, see this? This is flat here. So that's gonna do, the, that's gonna do most of the work right here because it's, it's not sloped, it's flat. So you gotta follow the contour with the, with the uh, circulation control. Now should it also then since right now it's still running, it runs along with this contour, but it ends at the property line. Should it not wrap, wrap around the, the property line a little bit so that it doesn't just go along the property line and dump into the next person's yard? This is flat here. And th so this is flat. So up here you need some silk fence. Down here you need some silk fence. What I'm talking about is where you said down here. That section, if that were to come at um, or, or, over 90 or less than 90 degree, um, at the property line, because I mean, if you just end it right there, that's right not the end of the contour. But so you're not. Any sense? I mean, no, um, I think that if they put intermittent, so he's going to put silk fence at the toe of the fill, so that'll be very helpful. I think he puts the hay bales where he originally said he was going to put them along the old roadway because they're going to be taking debris and other stuff out of there. So, okay, that'll protect that. So now you got the intermittent one here, you got this one here, and then the only other area that needs protecting is along this property. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it's a grade. So it's the water, the water's going to come down here and have a tendency to maybe blow through this one. So this, this, if you're going to put a double in, this is the place to put it right here. Well, how about silt socks? Can silt socks are not them? what you want. Not, not here? Uh, okay. Because it'll, it'll flow right over. Oh, all right. So that's what I'm suggesting. Silt fence coming down here, a, um, a double row in the corner right here, because yeah. that's where the water is going to go. And then he puts the one that he's saying down here. All right. Sound good? So I'll word it, and then if it's not what you want it to be, then you, we could talk about it when you actually vote at the next okay. meeting. But I'll, I'll try to word it so it makes sense to what I just said. Is that okay? okay? Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay. Now, um, that's the silk fence. What do you want? What What's the requirement, if anything, about plantings. I heard him propose a few things. Uh, I heard you saying a few things. What, what's, what, what do you want about that, if anything? So you folks who wanted that other yeah, I was behind still, the split rail? Mm, either directly in front of or behind the split rail. Um, what does everybody else think about that? I think do that. He's planning on doing a buffer planting alongside to block the headlights, like you said. Just throw that in there. Why, again, dig up more holes if he's going to leave it natural looking and plant bushes in the. Well, if it's in front of the. If you the plant fence, bushes it would be in front of the people, there's an understory view we saw in the photos. So if you start planting bushes there, those people are more likely to cut those down versus the trees because the trees aren't blocking the, the view of the water, it's the understory. <laughs> so they need to go through and clean out the understory so they can see the water. So planting bushes there is, is defeating the purpose. Have, you know, if you want them, put them on the side, on that one, the toe of that slope there. He's been doing two purposes. It's gonna hold back the soil and then block the headlight, uh, the light uh, pollution at the house. That's what I think. You got partial shade, partial sun, you got deer issues. Well, it depends on what you planted as to whether or not it would be effective, right? Because right. there are some that are, just, kind of that are resistant. Thing, you know? You already got the fence there, though, you know? Oh, it was just a suggestion. I wanted to bounce it off of everybody. Um. I think the I plantings that he was talking about along this property line. Yeah, that's what he was talking about, yeah. 
those really don't have much bearing on wetlands. No. Right. Because, because it's a slope there and the water's going to yeah. run past them. It's yeah. just aesthetic. So I, yeah, I, I don't think that. I would say leave that up to them. If, right. What, yeah. What, what you were talking about, Lois, was. Um, a buffer along the edge of, mm -hmm. of down here. I'm looking for nitrogen removal. You know, that, I mean, there's a large portion of that. It's all going to be lawn. That's a lot of fertilizer. If, if he decides he likes one of those beautiful lawns and gets chem lawn in there all the time, well, there's going to be a lot of junk in those. Size of nitrogen the trees. isn't a problem. Well, 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 the phosphorus <laughs> too. <laughs> phosphorus <laughs> has, been, has been removed from from uh, fertilizer. What's that? Well, there's still a lot of lawn chemicals that end up in whatever the chemicals are, and they're detrimental to the, the, the quality of the water in the lake. So that's my whole purpose, is to just detain as much of that runoff, get as much of that stuff out of the water before it gets to go down the slope into the lake. Um, so that's, that's my aim. Let's well, grass is the way to... But, but you that's know what I mean? Un, the untreated the grass oh, is untreated. better than is better than um, you know bushes where there's yes, nothing I growing think underneath. If them. it's untreated, but if he's treating the grass, then that's counterproductive. You see the size of the tree? It's a forest. It's got to filter through all that forest. Those trees are going to suck up more than any it's amount of bushes. It's on a slope plant. like this. How long is it going to be on that slope? Seconds before it just right down the side. It's not going to have much chance to, to percolate because the slope is so so steep. So those there's bushes out there will suck up all the water and all the nitrogen I better than, just, than, than 100 year old trees that have got root system throughout the whole entire property? But if I just water doesn't you're get gonna, there, You're not going to get any gain. You're not going to get any gain. Yeah, I don't think one row of bushes is going to do. But it's not going to hurt. I, I'm... Well then, come up with help me come up with something else. Then this is our job. We are wetlands protectors. Let's do our job. Well then, then, then I would say put a put a restriction that what's the scale of this map? What can we within miss? that he do, doesn't he doesn't uh, use fertilizer within within. And that's impossible to police. Well, can we ask them to come up with an idea of some plants? Well, that we've already closed. We can't really have any more. Um, introductions. I don't know. Um, you guys don't think it's going to do any value? Have any value to do that? If it was all. If there was nothing else there. I would More likely, yes, they'll go down the bushes and start maintaining them. You know, I don't know. I understand what you're saying about the, the understory, though. I mean, because that is what they would be looking for. Although, if they're up on the, the, the deck in the house, they're looking over everything. I was trying to put in small, one small, some small measure of protection. That's, that's really, I'm not doing it. So you're saying that we could, we can come up with an idea? Well, we, we talked about the, we can come up with that, with, well, we talked about the bushes in the hearing and the applicant was immune to it. Um, why, why don't you just keep it simple and um, I don't know how enforceable it is, but why don't you just have the, uh, a note put on the drawing indicating that um, mowing, the, the mowing, the, the, the maintenance of the lawn is to, um, you know, have, they could put a dash line in 10 feet in front of the... Foot rail fence. Right. Yeah. So it's 10 more, feet in front, it grows a little bit higher there. Limit, yeah. limit of lawn mowing, and then the rest is just going to be grass that's left to go to whatever. Meadow, you know, non mow grass. That's another one possible one to police. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, that's the trouble with conditions, is that, yeah. and they always say that, is that, you know, when you put conditions on an app, on a, an approval, 
they're very hard to enforce. I mean, how, how would we enforce that? Unless the, uh, we're going to wait until they sell the house and then we're going to go out. Unless a neighbor <laughs> complains or unless they come in and they want something else and we happen to notice that, oh, you're not following your approval, you know, that kind of thing. So you always want to keep in mind, too, that, you know, how practical is your are your conditions? <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm, I'm not as obviously worried as Lois is. We've still got a, a pretty good buffer, although it is steep, I'll give you that much to, to the wetlands. Um, you know, and, and I hate beating ourselves up a lot compared to, to some of the other other uh, applicants that are just, that are a lot closer to wetlands. Yeah. Given yeah. that it's not a lake, I agree, but it's, it's uh, still there's a good buffer. I'm also disgusted with all the overuse of all sorts of chemicals all over the place, and all that ends up in the wetlands one way or another. Mm -hmm. Anything extra, it's all it all ends in all these water bodies. It doesn't go anywhere else. So it's like you're talking about a grain of sand on a beach, you know, to try to to try to stop something that is gonna never have any type of real effect. It's gonna be it's a conscious decision of the people of the community to not overdo it. You know, it's 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 nothing. You, One you big dog. Go. Yeah. Goats. Is gonna is gonna is going to do more than a little lawn chemical. <laughs> That's true in a lot of ways, yes. I got a five-year-old that beats You're that dog. You're worse out the dog. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I have several. How about a note on the plans to eliminate or severely restrict Two. fertilizers? And a potty for a dog. And a potty for a yeah. dog. It must pick up their... Groups. No Great Danes. No Great Danes. <laughs> or St. Bernard's. <laughs> Something else. All right. Large. All, all right, okay, I can see thing. defeat. All right, Why so you I'll, I'll put together a uh, draft approval and we'll get it to you for the next meeting. Thank you. All right, so which one is that? That's... All right, so before we move to our last deliberation, which I believe... Keith is going to have to re is going to recuse yeah. for there's only the only other thing I see on the agenda is uh, to the time extension so could we handle that real quick so uh, and the minutes he has to vote on the minutes well we have enough people to vote on this yeah just hammer them out and let's get it over IWC 2018-07 205 North Turnpike request for a 90 day time extension to fulfill. Condition A of the Inland Wetland Approval issued on 8-22-18. I believe we have a letter from them, correct? Uh, yes. Okay, does anybody have any problems with the 90-day extension? For 205 Monroe Turnpike? Move to approve the 90-day extension request. Do okay, I have a motion to approve the 90-day extension? Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Spence. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, any abstention? Uh, extensions granted unanimously. Okay. I'm sorry, who made the motion? Uh, Commissioner Stewart. Treasurer Stewart. And what was your second? Yes, I did. No. All right. Keith, you want to weigh in on the meetings or you want to recuse for the... Is there enough people to vote on? Yes. I have nothing to say about it, so... All right. He voted yes. I'm voting. <laughs> so let the record reflect that Commissioner Romano is recusing himself from the deliberation of 269 Purdy Hill at 9.45 p.m. Take care, guys. All right, IWC 2019 06, 269 Purdy Hill Road, 25 unit age restricted housing with associated improvements and conversion of existing buildings on property to a two bedroom home, Burr Corner, Beaverbrook LLC. Um, now, isn't this one? That, this is a public hearing. Yeah, but it was approved once. Yeah, yeah we're, it's, so, but it was changed. How do you approve it again? Like it's, it's a different plan. Changed. It's oh. the same it's situation. Just a change of plan yeah. of the house. Change with not, of the new plan. plan of lay, what, what, the, what changed was the detention basin yeah. placement and the, the size and shapes of the units. Oh, okay. All right. And you know some other. Things, but a lot of this like, stuff is the I same. It was like the first one was individually units. It was. Okay. Now they're like, that but aren't they condos. adding more people? Though? Yes. Yes. They're more more doubling it. More doubling it. More dogs. <laughs> 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 
on the retention basis. But it's technically okay. a letter of purpose. I'd recommend that we ask staff to draft a, a letter of approval with conditions. Okay. Second. Say again, Jim. Jim. Direct staff to. Uh, well, yeah, to, a, we're going to for approval with conditions. We are going to ask our staff. Well, you don't make a motion to do a draft. Right, we don't make a motion, you're right. Okay, so just to go over quickly. Draft um, <laughs> when it comes to the A2 survey, um, Just so the commission understands, um, an A2 survey, Jim can help out with some of this too, but an A2 survey is really only good for what, it, what it's done for. Once, once the A2 is done, a year and a half later, two years later, the reason the commissions ask for updated surveys is so that we know that they actually, that's the land where they have. So if, if there was a transaction or a change or something that happened that would change the boundaries, you don't know that unless they give you an updated survey. So it gets a little funky because, I mean, obviously you can't do an updated survey like every month kind of thing. So there's a certain limit. Usually it's like a year, year and a half kind of, but I, I ask that the surveyor at least provide some information saying that, hey, I checked the land records. Yeah, you could do it. Yeah, yeah, something quicker, class or, D or something. Yeah, at you know, least it'd show if there was an easement put across it or something weird. Yeah, this is a new one for me because I've never seen property owners uh, providing a letter saying that there's no change. So. And it's not dated, by the way. Yeah, okay, it's not dated, and it's property owners, it's not the surveyor. So what I <clears throat> discussed with him was, look, I don't really need an updated T2. I mean, you can go out there and look at the grades and see, okay, we're dealing with, and I'm comfortable with that. The A2 is merely to, just to verify that it is, in fact, the, the property that they're telling you it is. Because if, we get, if, we, if you approve it and they start building it, and then someone comes to the office and says, why are they working on my property? It could be a little bad for everybody. Um, so yeah, they, you said they, it was good for a year, year and a half. He said it was a year and seven months. Well, a year, year so, and a half. It's only. It's really. It's well, really how old? Not how old is it? It's some, almost months. two years. It's, and they get, but they gave you one with a with a. They gave a live a, seal on it. Yeah. That's, well, then, yeah. And but I the mean, problem is that. Right, you know, right after the previous approval and the previous survey that was done, they could have done a land swap. How do we know? You know, they do a land swap that you don't, you don't have to do a survey for that, and it gets filed on the land records or whatever, and uh, we don't know. And that's why, that's why the statutes require that the commissions get current A2 surveys. Because I get this argument all the time. We already did a survey. Why do we have to pay for a new one? So, what well, I the say, same. If you were having the same surveyor do it, he doesn't do. He doesn't need to go out there and do anything exactly. other than walk the property, make sure there's nothing going on, exactly, and do a title search and stamp the drawing with a new date. And it's that's not what a big I asked. Deal. And that's what I asked for. And but that's not what you got. So what do you want me to do how, with that? Well, I mean, it's I old just, it, just have the survey. How old is it? Is it it's a year like, and a half? It, he, he said a year. It's more like a year and not nine months, almost oh, two years. I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> Personally, I mean, as long as you've got an A2 survey that's stamped and sealed and it's part of your package. Yeah, but the problem is it wasn't this package. Right. Oh, it well. It was the old package. He's got to give it to you part of that package. Right. As if a he's middle. Us Part of he can't give you an old survey from an old package. It's because who knows if that surveyor that's is exactly what Scott he's got to he's got to so pay gonna, that surveyor to stamp to the party, the, Jim. <laughs> okay. So I'll I'll reword I'll reword that. You tell guys tell me if, it, if there's a problem after. So Welcome I'll, to so the So that party. one will stay. Thank uh, you. The item B. Where's the, the flags, beer? Uh, the flags for wetland area uh, 16 sheep meadow. We're going to cross that right. Off, right? Yeah. right. So they don't have to do that. And then we got uh, added reference to the existing drainage easement. Uh, they're going to correct that. We'll put that in. The approximate location of utilities on Sheet Meadow prior to construction, they agreed they put that note on there. Uh, 
approval contingent on. We'll put that in there. Soils report and wetlands report should be expanded to include 9 and 11 sheet meadow drive. It's too late. You guys didn't ask for anything on that. But what my point that I was trying to make is the, there's two properties here, and they never put that in their report. Like, are there wetlands within 100 feet of those? Because they're going to be digging a trench. It's too late now. You didn't ask. I, I looked. You were talking about the, the two properties directly adjacent south yeah. of that, this development, right? It's combined play. Oh, yeah, that's, that's good. That's what they gave me for this, for this past submission. You know, one thing you got to check is that they're giving you the current plans because it's, I've noticed that's been a problem. Um, so just be aware of that. Okay. So um, yeah, this isn't the greatest one to show you, but here's the basin, your reverse now, and here's the pipe coming down the hill mm -hmm. and over to Sheep Meadow. Well, this, see this wetland that comes over here, and there's another wetland that's coming over here. Well, what happens to the wetland all in this It area? disappears. I looked at the town wetland map. I did actually go on the GIS and looked at the wetland map, and okay. it does not show wetlands there. Okay. Well, that's what I was asking. And, and typically, the soils report should have said, hey, I checked this out and there's no wetlands in, in the vicinity of this area. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm getting at. But it's kind of a mood issue because you didn't require it, you can't require right. it now. And so it was one approved before, more. so. We need to learn for next time. Yeah, all right, so, um, so that one I'll take out. Um, take that out. I think and what they did actually was build those two properties because it's the same, it's the same contour as the, the wetlands on the, on the adjacent properties, but all of a sudden the wetlands disappear. All right, and so I'll leave in item D that the wetlands should, um, the wetlands assessment should have the correct reference. Uh, number five, the layout. Um, the, so you, I'm assuming you agree with what I suggested for the redoing the, the markers. On the, on, the, on the existing property? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. It's, it's a yard, so. Yes. You know, you wouldn't mm -hmm. want the markers up at the house. I got that as a note here. And then there was a missing one on the other portion that I, I uh, put in there. Okay. Uh, it's got the wrong plan. But, um, and then we've got, um, then there was a bunch of drainage ones that I'll just go ahead and do and you can read after the fact. They're, they're more technical about the, um, you know, the, the drainage calculations. Unless someone has something specific you want to tell me, I'll just write those and you can. The only other one that I had was to replace the bleeder where the 3 by 15 stone energy disappeared. Um, that you would, he had discussed. Yeah, that's one of the ones coming up. Okay. Level spreader. Okay, so then we've got pipe sizing the uh, the hundred year that so J would stay in and those all those drainage ones would stay in, um, and then the uh, footing drain for units right at the property line that's one you just talked about so mm -hmm. that's the level yeah. spreader, and then uh, footing drain for communicated label advice to avoid that's the one that he kind of changed I got to look at the plan but I'll reword that because. I don't think he needs to avoid the conflict anymore because he it looked like he corrected the plan, but I'll, I'll have to check that out and reword it. $20,000 <laughs> bond. Now, is there anything you want me to add in to it? Uh, I have something about enhancement plantings at the street meadow outfall. Was that on the plan? Um, I believe that I asked for that, and I, that was one of the ones I crossed off because they put it on the plan. Okay, yes. then never mind. That's okay. what I have. Yep. So I'll go ahead and give you a draft on that and we'll take it from there. Okay. Fantastic. All right. Good job, Scott. All right. So the next thing that's on our agenda is the minutes of February 27, 2018. I'm sorry. 19. We have two. Yeah. 
It says 18, but it's 19. But Scott, you got no, uh, you got no permission no, to sit right no, or no. nothing like that, right? All right. Okay. So it mentioned February 27, 2019. Did Denise not give you that stuff? Because there was some stuff I signed off on. But she did not. Yeah. So she may have just not given it to me. So it'll be on the next one. All right. Excellent. All right. Anybody have anything on the February 27th meeting I do, minutes? I had a question on page two, um, the fourth paragraph down, the very last sentence. Like it's missing something because it doesn't say anything. It just says, Mr. Paterla, Mr. Paterla, that 494 is actually necessary because of the area. I don't understand. Are they? Did Mr. Paterla state that putting it at the 494 contour is necessary because of the layout of the area or something like that? They were I didn't, talking about grades. Definitely. They were definitely talking about grades. I know um, Jeff wanted it higher at 498 and 496, but Mr. Petrola said that he needed to put it at 494 because of something. I don't know what the something was. All right, I'll listen to that and find out. Some very minor typos that I can't even find right now. So, therefore, they don't exist. So that was my only comment on these minutes. Okay. Um, so we need a motion. To approve as presented? Okay, we have a I mean, as, as, as amended. We have a motion by Commissioner Spence to approve the minutes of the February, uh, the February 27, 2019 meeting as amended. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by uh, Clark. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? Okay, now moving on to the March 13, 2019 minutes. Move to approve as presented. Whoa. Second. Oh my God. Wow. Motion to approve as presented by Commissioner Spence. A second by Clark again. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any abstention? Uh, minutes pass. No correspondence. Can I have, um, can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion. Motion to adjourn by Commissioner Stewart. A second. Second. All those in favor? Any opposed? Any abstention? Adjourned.